going on, Landon? What's up, dude? <laughs> mm. Just woke up from a nap, actually. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, it's kind of been one of those weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good. Your video's not on. Um. Okay, hold on. It's a good thing that you just woke up from a nap because it's just you and me tonight. Uh, where's Tori? She had um, one of her girlfriends, I think, if, I, if I'm reading between the lines correctly, one of her girlfriends was, I think, proposing to another one of her girlfriends. And they made a day of it. And the one, the one of the two didn't know what was going to happen and all that. And Tori told me last week, she said, there's a chance we won't be back in time for me to join you. And I said, okay. Um, and then she messaged me earlier today and she said, yeah, I don't think we're going to be back in time. So I hope you're good okay, with that. Good. I'm, t I'm totally ready to roll. You know, what's weird. I'm not seeing an option to select my camera. Hmm, let me see here. I can leave the meeting and come back in too. Yeah, you might need to because I don't have the option to do that. If you were on Skype recently, that may cause it. And if you've if you've had video open for another app lately, sometimes that's also the case. Um. Oh, okay. I haven't. I've been on Zoom a few times this week, so I'll be right back. Cool. totally weird. I'm getting the same thing. Hmm. Maybe. Let me pull up Zoom. I always, I always, whether I've got people on or not, I always have that button checked for other people's oh, camera. Let me mm -hmm. make sure that I've got it set. Okay. I'm going to mute myself for a second. My son just came. Cool.
Sorry about that. No worries. Okay, we're good. Yes. How old are your kids? Uh, 14 and 15, almost 15 and 16. Okay, good times. You? 17 and almost 21. 17-year-old's a son I was just chatting with, just girlfriend stuff, so. <laughs> oh, you know. boy, do I remember that crap. I just moved my daughter down to North Hollywood uh, last weekend. So she's transferring to Northridge down there. So only, it was only five hours away. It wasn't bad, but I'm like, uh, how much longer? <laughs> mm-hmm. So they're good though. <laughs> yeah. I'm counting down the, I'm counting down the days. Ash and I are going to be moving to the mountains. Um, as soon as, as soon as they graduate high school, we've got, what is this? A freshman and a, and a, Sophomore? Yeah, freshman mm-hmm. and sophomore. So we've got a couple of years left, but I can't wait. Oh, I'm right there. I'm like, I'm out of suburbia. Like year and a half. My parents went up to this little town called uh, Pioneer. It's kind of like Lake Tahoe. They're about 45 minutes southeast. I'm like with an acre. Like you'll wake up and there's deer there. And I'm like, oh. like I'm going to build up here somewhere, guys. <laughs> like right. I'm just like, I'm so tired of lawnmowers <laughs> and just all of it. Yeah, that's... uh that's how we are. It's like, <clears throat> there's just so much friggin' noise. Like, yeah, it never stops. <laughs> That's yep. totally it. And I swear I wasn't this conscious of it till you start working from home and you get these like chunks of silence. And I'm like, Oh my God. Like I will find, I used to find myself sitting in the house with my bows on with, I'm not listening to anything. <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. it's so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I lived in the mountains for about five, five and a half years um, when my kids were little, little kids. My daughter wasn't even born yet when we moved up there. And we weren't like way out, but we were out far enough that especially when it snowed, it was like weird. It was like awkward. The first couple of, <laughs> the, first, the first winter really was like, this is fucking weird. Like it's so quiet, right? It's, like yeah. the revenant quiet. <laughs> yeah. Yep. What's going on? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, tonight's topic is loose, because it's Friday Night Live. Um, Originally, it was on content. Content you're doing it wrong is still what it's titled. Um, Mm -hmm. You're the WordPress chick. Interesting. Almost formerly. Almost formerly. Interesting. Do you want to out that on tonight's show? Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. You've been the WordPress chick for a while, right? Almost 10 years. Because I, I remember, like, I found you several times way before this group. Um, <laughs> like, seriously, building yeah. websites and shit. Yeah, I had an outsourcing company. I never wanted to build websites. Right. Ever. I thought I was going to be a, you know, information millionaire. Like, I was going to sell ebooks and make thousands and thousands of dollars a month. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, but no, like, and the whole thing is, it's like, everything is changing. I feel like we're totally going through a cycle of stuff shifting and it's just websites are a commodity and the truth landed. I'm like, I'd rather be the star than the producer. So here we go. Yep. Good. Well, we're going to have a good show. I'm going to go ahead and take us live. Okay. Get, uh, once this starts, um, we'll have a, a minute or so while it's connecting and then I need to grab the volume button and then we'll go live. I'll do a quick little intro and then we'll get right into it. I'm going to throw you right in the frying pan and say, you know, tell us who you are and what you do and how you ended up here on Friday night live. I'm all in. Cool. Now can I, sh- I'll share in my group that I'm going live in your group. I know there's some crossover. Totally. Okay. Gorilla Army, what is going on? Happy Friday Night Live. Tonight, we've got a really interesting conversation about content. You might be doing it wrong. Originally, it was going to be Kim and Tori and I. Tori got caught up and tied up, and she wasn't able to make it, which is fine, because last week, Tori and I kind of riffed on on some content stuff as well. Tonight, Kim and I are going to get deep into what is going on now with content, where we used to be with content, and what it is that you should be looking into. Smash the fuck out of that heart button, smash the like button, comment, say, hey, what's up, tell us that you're here, 
if you're on the replay, hashtag replay gorilla. And lastly, before I throw Kim right into the frying pan, there is a little button down there somewhere, whether you're watching this on desktop or mobile, that you can click to get notified when we go live. You might want to do that if you think what we do here is cool. So with that said, Kim, how are you tonight? I'm fantastic. I just had a lovely little nap. It's about 75 degrees outside. I'm like, this is a nice Friday. <laughs> That's awesome sauce. Yeah, the weather is crazy nice. We need rain, but welcome to Northern California. <laughs> yeah, you guys have been having a water problem for a while. Yeah, last year we thought we caught up, you know, and of course the news, you know, takes everything to the 10th level. Uh, so we had a ton of rain last year. This year, not so much. So I'm sure we'll, you know, mind you, when that happens, you start getting charged for overusage, you know, $300 a month water bills. It's pretty fun. <laughs> wow. That's mm -hmm. bananas. Mm -hmm. So, but no, things are good. So you've been the WordPress chick since God made dirt. <laughs> It totally feels that way, right? I was like, I think it's almost as old as WordPress, which I didn't realize because WordPress is only maybe 12 years old now. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, almost 10 years. Yeah. I remember I found you um, several times way before we had this group, way before we were doing the, the sales gorilla stuff. I've built a bunch of websites and I've always, WordPress is the platform that I prefer. So I found you several times throughout the years because I was looking to figure out how to do a thing. Mm -hmm. And then when we connected on Facebook, because of this, I was like, oh, holy crap. <laughs> right? So funny, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that whole uh, WordPress chick thing is coming to an end. Yeah, it is. You know, what's funny is I've had the thought about doing that for years. And it, it might sound a little bit uh, esoteric, but it is when you know, you know. And it was the timing was right. And I'd spent a long time. I'll do a quick little synopsis, but like, I never wanted to build websites. Next thing you know, like I've got an outsourcing company and developers and designers. And I'm like, ah, like <laughs> anybody, and I'm, you know, obviously the name of the group has clients. You have to find that balance between serving your clients and building your own business. Right. So you have to be able to do both. And it's just, I think I got tired of showing people how to do stuff and, and not knowing like at the time, the monetization I'd, I had done coaching through that. And a lot of the coaching clients then ended up becoming outsourcing clients, which worked. Um, but there's so much free how to with WordPress that people don't necessarily want to pay for it. And I don't know, I just kind of got, I just, it ran its course. So within probably the next month or two, everything's just getting moved to kimdoyle.com. Bad. podcast is going to go the content i'll get rid of some of the content um but yeah everything's just moving over formerly known as right that's awesome yeah. sauce so what is your main focus going to be as far as what you're actually doing moving forward so it's kind of exciting well so two things one under the kim doyle is is content and and i'll talk about that but i'm actually launching a SaaS. And it's kind of crazy how this came out. And this is one of those, you know, everything hap takes longer than you think it's going to take, right? Mm -hmm. um, but this is a testament to creating content. So, you know, I started the podcast probably five, four or five years ago because I wanted to have more fun. I was literally like, I need to do something that has more of my personality versus here's how to do this with this, right? And so I knew that I would do solo shows also. Mm -hmm. Like every other week I would do a solo and an interview. And so I had a plugin developer reach out to me and he said, Hey, I'm going to take my plugins. I don't know if you're familiar with code Canyon. They sell plugins, right? So uh, yeah. it's a market. Okay. So it's a marketplace and they're like, yeah, we're going to take everything out of the marketplace. Can we, would you be up for doing an interview? Long story short. I talked to him. He's in Croatia. The first time I talked to him was like two hours long because he's hysterical, super smart. So we do the interview. We kind of stay in touch. He's like, do you have any ideas for a plugin? And I was like, actually, the original idea was like a checkout page that kind of looked like Sam cart or thrive cart, but you could sell one thing through WordPress without having to set up an entire EDD or WooCommerce or something. Right. So, I but I could not get excited about it because people in the WordPress space get pissed about renewing a license for a hundred bucks for the year. Right. And I'm like, eh, this is not, this is not going to work for me. So it was probably, I think it was November of 2016. I, I go to someone's website and there's an opt-in and it, just a little modal window opens up and it's like, step one, are you a blogger, podcaster, marketer? And then I answer step two. 
what social platforms you're on. Step three, how big is your list? And then it's like, oh, here's your download, right? I was like, oh my God, that dude just got massive data on me, right? I was like, this is totally brilliant. So I do the view page source and you guys, I'm not a developer. So that's the other thing about building a brand in a space when you're actually not a developer was, and that's content. Um, but long story short, I tried to hack it 10 ways sideways. I'm like, maybe I can put a gravity form and a thrive themes. I asked one of my developers, he's like, yeah, we could do it, but as a plugin, it'd be hard, blah, blah, blah. So my business partner, Gordon, I'm all, so I kind of have this idea. <laughs> long story short, uh, lead surveys was born. So it, we thought we were going to launch last summer. It's literally going to be live probably next week. And that's what it does. It segments your subscribers point of opt-in, just very clean, you know, cup, two, three questions. And, and it, it's just, so where marketing is going, it's all personalized marketing. So if you knew, you know, that 70% of your list were podcasters, you would cater your content to podcasters. You would create products for podcasters. And so ideally this is version zero because he keeps telling me like, Kim, what you want is not version zero. <laughs> we'll be able to sort of stack surveys. So like, then you come back to the site. It's like, Hey Landon, last time you were here, you said, you know, you did live streaming. Did you see our recent article? So it's all of that stuff is where it's supposed to go. So lead surveys is going to be a huge element to this. And the whole content for me, I'm sorry, I'm really running now. I think that nap totally renewed me. <laughs> Do it to it. Um, but the whole content thing came and I think a lot of people in this group will probably resonate with this. So I was in a high ticket mastermind for a few years and, you know, I, the value from the tangible deliverable deliverables was not really there. Right. It started out as a Facebook advertising group, which was great. I learned a ton and I started getting into ads and then it shifted to more of a, you know, we're your big expensive mentors and here. And, and, but I met a ton of amazing people, had some amazing adventures. And, but from that experience, you feel almost burnt a little bit, right? So I'm like, I'm going back to fundamentals. I'm going to play, I'm going to play with copy. I'm going to study headlines. I'm just going to dive back into all the stuff. I liked creating content before versus selling high ticket for the sake of high ticket. And I just kind of started falling back in love with content. So then I was like, well, I have to create content for lead surveys because that's, I get to do content marketing and then he's doing development support, all of that. And, you know, I was like, I have to document this anyways. And I was fascinated. Did you read Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson? Mm -hmm. Okay. So having read that book, I was like, huh. And I had probably been one of the first hundred customers of ClickFunnels way back. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, he drives me crazy. I'm whatever. I can do all this stuff with WordPress, right? Mm -hmm. But then I read this book and I was like, oh my God, this is kind of the fundamentals again. And I started paying attention to all their content. I'm like, you totally got me back as a customer because of who you are when I get to watch what you're doing, right? Yep. I couldn't consume their content quick enough. And so I was like, how do we build a company that people resonate with? How do we become, you know, that people feel like they're on the journey? So that's kind of where I'm at now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you brought up a lot of things in there that I've got a bunch of questions on. Um, Almost everybody that's watching this now and in the future will understand what we mean when we say content. But um, like I had a conversation with Tori in her group a couple of weeks ago and she broke it down for the people that follow her that just because you're not doing it on a blog doesn't mean that it's not blogging, right? I think a lot of people have a misconception of content. Um, when you say content, specifically, what is it that you mean? I mean, anything you're publishing and producing online, to be honest with you, that is a message, a story, stories are gold, right? A message, a story, some written audio, video, anything you're publishing on a platform online is content, really. I am always going to be a proponent of at least having some of your content on some platform that's yours. Mm -hmm. right? You don't have to do WordPress. I don't care if it's Kajabi or ClickFunnels, but some property that you get some SEO value from. And mind you, I think all of that's changing too. Yep. Long form content totally has its place, but, but you have to be producing content where your audience is and engaging on those platforms. So no, it doesn't have to be a blog at all. Okay. And you brought up podcasts and mm -hmm. you've been doing podcasts for five years ish now. Yeah. 
Okay. And I think you kind of, I think you kind of answered this, but I want to get clear on it. How often do you publish a podcast? Uh, I had a little sabbatical here right after the first year, but it was weekly. And so I will be shifting the WordPress chick podcast will just become the Kim Doyle show. And then for lead surveys, I have to show you because I love stickers. So our mascot is a Fox. Her name is Lexi. Nice. So we have a podcast called don't give a Fox. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Right. Right? Right I'm like, I'm, I'm totally going to sell swag, but don't give a Fox. I really, she's kind of fun too, because again, it's about your audience and your customers. So it's not all about you. So it was just a great name. And actually a friend gave it to me. I forgot where we're going to do something else. So I'll be doing a podcast through that too. So I'm pumped. Awesome. Hey guys, if you've got questions about content or any specific platform that we bring up or a question directly for Kim or myself, by all means, the title of tonight's show is content. You're doing it wrong. We're going to, we're going to land that plane here after a bit, but I want to really get clear on what it is that we're both kind of talking about and doing currently, how that's different than what we used to do and where we both think that it's headed as far as content. Mm -hmm. The reason that we create content for our audience ultimately is for what end goal? To build a relationship. Right. First and foremost, it's to connect with people and and to build that relationship. And what I love it, I mean, you've been on this space for a long time, Landon, is it's, it's what's been fun to me is you see all these gurus, the best word I can get, right? But all these people that maybe old school marketers enough about me. What do you think about me? And they're kind of trying to play catch up. And it, some of them, to me, it seems like they're like, I don't know how to be in this space because they're trying to take this, let me preach from the mountain. And I'm, real, I'm not a hater, like be you, do you? But I think they're not sure. And there's a level of discomfort in this, just show up and, and share some value, right? It's interesting that you bring that up. That's been an ongoing um, internal conversation for a, for a while now, um, the, the marketing and the way we convey the message is fundamentally changed and how we build relationships is in there somewhere. Um, many of the old school marketers that leveraged the internet to market don't have a fucking clue. Like that's just the problem. Most of them don't. Um, and it's interesting because they are being outclassed in many ways by people that don't have the chops that they've got as far as the old school marketing thing. Mm-hmm. And old school, traditional, principle-based marketing will always work because it's principles. But the way that that yeah. relationship is developed and created is drastically changing. It is. And, you know, it's fascinating is I, I've even seen, you know, people that it's like where I listen to their podcast and they've been podcasting for a long time and they're trying to do more vlogging. Like, it's really funny to me. Like everything feels so cyclical. Vlogging was a thing years ago. Now it's really popular again. But yet when they've been doing a polished produced production, yep. it's kind of like, it feels forced. That's the best way I can explain it is that the vlog feels forced and like, they're just not sure, you know, how to proceed from there. And I'm like, your content's not super fun to watch, right. you know, where I'm really enjoying. And so in a way, I feel like the, the playing field has really been leveled with the direction that we're going in. Yeah, it is. Um, it, it's interesting that you bring that up too. Um, for those of you that are watching this, Kim and I interact a little bit and we run in many of the same circles, but we've not really sat down and been able to have a one-on-one conversation. It's interesting that both of us have been in this space for as long as we have. And we have come to the same conclusions about what's going on right now. That's exactly it. The playing field has been completely leveled. Um, And those who are willing to step out and just be who the fuck you are, right? Right. Your weird ass self and own that shit a hundred percent are the people that are gathering their actual tribe. Mm -hmm. That's what I dig seeing. Sorry, I'm just going to shut the window. It's a little noisy out there. (laughs) No worries. We couldn't hear it. I couldn't anyways. Okay, good. Directional mic. That's a good thing. Right. Podcast. I am going to be doing a podcast. I've kind of, I've alluded to it. I've alluded to it and I've been talking about it and here's my, um, I've got some questions about it and I'm going to make this FNL a little bit selfish for a minute. 
Um, you've been doing a podcast for quite a while and you do it weekly. You're not the first person that I've heard do it weekly from, and I've got some friends that run podcasts for other people and that's what they do for a living. And everybody says a short show once a week. That's so fucking boring. Well, you know, here, here's, okay, now I, I could say like, what would I do differently, right? So mm -hmm. the reason I picked that and was because I like listening to hour long shows. Mm -hmm. Like I live in these when I'm out and about, like people talk to me when I'm in stores and I'm like, what, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and I just live in a headset. And so like, I get bummed. I, I literally, like, I can't tell you how much Gary Vee or whatever, like I download a ton of stuff that's even YouTube keynotes as an audio and I put it in Dropbox and I put it on my phone because I like listening to long form content when mm -hmm. I'm out. Like, dude, I had cassette tapes in my car, like, you know, Zig Ziglar and Brian Tracy and mm -hmm. all those guys. Like I've been, I'm a total audiophile. And so that's how I feel too. And like, I, I'll look at marketing secrets with Russell Brunson. I'm like, this is six minutes. God, after I hear the intro, like it's over, I'm kind of bored. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I was 18. That whole six minutes would be perfect, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little bit more than that. You know? Well, that's exactly it. I'm like, well, God, I, yeah, that's just it. You want more. So what I love about the podcast, it's like, you get to do whatever you want with it. For a little bit, I was doing, I would do a Kim snippet and I would do 15 minutes of just something that I felt like sharing. And I, you know, I was doing that. So with the Kim Doyle show, I will have way more fun and I will drop whatever I feel like, you know, but I want it to be more, I don't know about you, but I'm like me, my business, we're all just sort of one. There isn't this Kim Doyle entrepreneur. I'm like, I just, I share. And the truth is my life's not super exciting, but I will share stuff. I record stuff in the car. So I love that you don't want to just do the same thing. Yep. Yep. Um, it's going to be gorilla radio, right? Amen. Um, <laughs> awesome name. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've, I've thought a lot about it. I, literally I've, I've asked, I don't know, probably a dozen people that I've got respect for like what their ideas and their thoughts and good guidance and direction in that would be. Um, I just honestly don't know that one 20 or 30 minute show a week would set like, here's the deal. If I do a podcast, which it's not an, if it's a, when it's going to be more for me and I don't really give a Fox. <laughs> You know what that's I mean? Totally. That's all I felt like. I'm like, I have got to have more fun in my business. So, mm -hmm. and it was the best thing I ever did. Right. Okay. Um, I love it, Landon. So the mic that you're using right now, like break down briefly what kind of tech you use to do your podcast. So let me tell you too, this was an upgrade. Like this was a present to myself. I started with the Yeti. Mm -hmm. and um, Yeti, and I just have, it's right now I've just got ear pods in, but I'll do, I've got a, a mic connected. This is uh, the high LPR 40. And so I had to get a mixer to connect it, which I was like, Oh, for the love. And then of course I had to run out to radio shack and get something else to connect something, whatever. Um, and I used to record directly into audition or I'd use Skype. Well, Zencaster came along and made the world a beautiful place. Have you heard, are you familiar with Zencaster? Okay. Uh, this is all I recorded now. And whether it's a solo show or an interview and you just literally log in, it is such crisp, clear audio and you can test it for free. Uh, but if you upgrade, I think it's 20 bucks a month, you get a wave file. And then when you're interviewing, it's two separate wave files. So you can edit, it's cleaner. You can do intros, outros. It sends it directly to Dropbox. And so I'll do that. And then usually if I want to do an intro or outro, then I hop back in and I, I record that really quick. And it's just, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And then I go back and forth. I've had an editor for years and then my daughter's a film student. So she edits for me now. And um, that's it. I, I started with a polished, produced, you know, kind of radio intro. And then that, that sort of started feeling cheesy. Mm -hmm. So I took, I don't know how long, rewrote the intro, did it to music, had it edited. So it's just, but the tech is, it's simple. This and um, always have headset in when you record, but Zencaster. I honestly, that, do you ever do anything on Anchor? No, but I've heard about it a couple of times. Yeah, I, I think anybody who's even remotely considering a Zencaster, and I will just drop the link in here for everybody if that helps. Yep. Zencaster. It's uh, no E-R. So um, Anchor's funny because I had joined it when it first came out, and I was like, 
what, what? Like I've got to stay at home talking to people. Like it just felt like a tedious pain in the ass kind of. And so then I looked at it again. I think they went through funding or something. Here's the cool thing with anchor is one, it's up to five minute snippets. You can send it directly to iTunes or Google if you want to drop it directly. Uh, so you can actually launch a podcast directly from Anchor on your phone. It's a phone app. But what's cool is you can export it as a video now. So you can export it in square, story, or wide, and it does transcripts. So you go in there and the, the, the transcription, like the AI that interprets it, is so easy to edit. And then I share that as content socially too. It's gold. I friggin' love Anchor. Badass. You can make it longer, but I would, I would play with that for anybody who's considering it. Okay. Interesting. Do you, you totally have a podcast voice. You totally have to. <laughs> right. Well, like I've been told that and told that and told that. I don't listen to any podcasts, like any of them. It's just, that's not my thing. I am a visual, right? I was fucking audio for 15 years and I didn't have the ability to have it visual and then, so like doing this, I'm like, why would I not have the video piece of it too? And I guess I shouldn't say that. I catch the short snippets of the Joe Rogan show on YouTube if the topic and the guest are interesting to me. But um, that's kind of the style of, of uh, podcast that I would do. And it would have a video component, I would imagine. Yeah, um, yeah if you can do a video component, I absolutely would. Yeah. I absolutely would. Yeah. Okay. Shifting gears. I'm not, really quick. I'm not one of those people. I've done the, I'm even shifting my thought process on how you repurpose content for a while. I'd sent the podcast just to YouTube, like with a, with a tool and it was great, but I was like, I don't know. I felt like I was cheating. I'm all, it's just like a little wave file. So, and I listen to audio all the time on, on YouTube. So that's not it. But um, I don't know. I just felt like it was just cheesy or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. Guys, we I, I noticed a couple of questions back a few minutes ago. I will go back and get those here in a second. Um, do you think there is a specific hierarchy of content that anyone should use? And what I mean by that is, is we've got people that are coaches and people that are consultants and people that sell you know, service-based business stuff. Um, and really ultimately what we're doing is, is we are becoming and being a media company for our own brands. Do you think there is a specific hierarchy of content that needs to be created by anybody and everybody? I just tell people the best content you can create is whatever you're going to do consistently. So if audio is easy for you to create, run with it. And because, you know, a lot of times people don't create, they think I need a strategy and keywords and I have to plan all this out. And the thing is the person who just gets out there and hits publish and be, works on the mastery of, of creating content, you're going to be better off. So if you have your own site, it will always, always benefit you to produce content, right? And, and on your site, whether it's long form, short, I do daily emails and I take those and I publish them as posts. I'm like, I'm hitting publish and I will watch my traffic jump a thousand visits when I publish a post. It just happens. And it's not, it's not rocket science. The site's been out a long time and I know there's some leverage there, but it's just, it's amazing to me with the consistent publishing, what happens and you have to be willing to do it when all you hear are crickets for a while. Right. Yeah. Well, um, part of the deal though. I mean, right. You, know, you got to build an audience and where do you start? Ground zero. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's like, like I said before, it's audio written video. It's not going anywhere. Right. So I, I tell people just practice even like too many times I'm like out walking the dogs and I'm going to do something quick and witty and I'm all, that was really stupid. I am not sharing that, but I, pr I'm, I'm like getting more comfortable with stories and doing this stuff. So you have to, just get in the habit of this. How many pieces of content do you think you create and publish daily? Oh, that's a really good question. There are probably some days where it is zero. I'll tell you that. But for the most part, I try to do five to 10 pieces of content a day. Now, if you, if you include stuff that I do in the group, it's, it's a little bit more frequently, um, but five to 10 a day. And again, it's just getting in that habit of thinking, Oh, I can take a picture of this and add it to a story. I can add it to a story. It's just giving people little glimpses of who you are and sort of how you move through the world because that's part of how they gauge whether or not they want to be in your space. Mm -hmm. um, 
we've got so many comments going that they're falling off the bottom of this. So I'm going to, I'm going to grab a couple of these. NJ says, would podcast show frequency and length be about what your audience prefers? Um, no, I think it's whatever you can deliver at your highest, you know, value in a sense. Like people are like, how do you talk for an hour? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Mind you, <laughs> right? I write that full episode post out. There's something that as soon as I started doing the daily emails, I kind of fell in love with writing and it became this sort of methodical process that I enjoyed with the story weaving. So I have to write that out. Otherwise you can see, I talk a little bit circular, right? And I would go way too off cuff. Um, so I don't think so at all. It, it's, it's the length of the podcast. Obviously if you do it more frequent, then you can, you have a better chance maybe of getting ratings, but I saw something and I can't remember what it was, but you know, the idea of getting discovered in iTunes, people are going to find your podcast by where you share it and how you talk about it and who else you're talking to and the topics. Not that you don't want to be in, you know, no noteworthy or whatever, but, um, no, I, I totally think it's whatever you can do consistently that, that produces value. So I have a question for you about that, that I won't forget, but before we lose this one, Elizabeth asks, was the idea behind shorter stuff because people have shorter attention spans these days? Shorter stuff can be too short. I, I totally think so. But, but the thing is, what, what I will focus on with audio, and I, you know, I am a Gary Vee Kool-Aid drinker, but it is the only passive content. It's, only, it's the only content you can consume passively, mm -hmm. right? So like I drove my daughter to LA last week. I finished two and a half books and I listened to some podcasts, you know, so it's, you can consume it anywhere doing anything for the most part, you know, so you have to really, um, I think the longer snippet is it's just, unless it's like, you guys, I have one nugget for you. Like I thought about doing like a content prompt or a content nugget. And it's like, here's, here's an idea of the day, right? Or like when I do those daily emails, my whole, everything is content. I'll show them how I take falling down the stairs. I literally fell down my stairs and turned it into a daily email. And that was my headline. I literally fell down the stairs, right? But I twist it. And so I was like, I could do that every day. I could hop on Facebook live. I would grab the audio out of it and just do a, okay guys, this is what happened. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to turn this candle into a piece of content that tells a story, but that drives people to something. Even if it's, you know, I will create content around other people's stuff too. I'm not always, it's not always a call to action. It's, it was more about getting people in the habit of clicking through to something. So I become their valued resource for other things as well. Yeah. You're a curator to an extent. Mm -hmm. Charmaine asks question for Kim. Since you mentioned click funnels, do you think click funnels is worth the money? That's one question. I'm very comfortable with WordPress, been using it for years. So I'm pretty sure I'm just going to do my next site with WordPress, but I wonder if I'm missing something. I've got FOMO, I guess. <laughs> um, well, it's funny because that's how I was. And I, I went back and now what I'm using it more for is, I, I, I mean, the funnel concept, it's like how much do we leave on the table by not having, even as an example, I've got a couple like content downloads, right? Like a content cheat sheet and I've got an audio and a PDF or these content crib notes we made. And it's like, Okay, I could just put the opt-in on my site or on the thank you page, which again, I could do all of this with Thrive in WordPress. You know, there's an option, oh, join the Facebook group. But the beauty, as an example, with the SaaS product, I literally hacked their entire new demo trial funnel. It's nine pages long. I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. And, you know, our advertising company is hooking it through with Woo Like, so there's just... I don't know. You can do everything. If you have a landing page builder, whether it's Thrive or Beaver Builder or whatever, you can, you can do all of that. Mm -hmm. Truly. You're not going to get the, um, the e-commerce piece to check out, you know, so, but you can integrate it with anything. So really it's a beauty and it's funny because as these page builders for WordPress keep getting better and better, ClickFunnels seems easier and easier to me. I don't know why I'm like, Oh God, padding and margins, which I, I can do all that stuff, you guys, but there's something about being able to go in and knock it out. And obviously anything you play with more frequently. So for what it's worth, it's not necessary by any means, but I also think, and I'd love your thoughts on this, Landon, there is also this per perception, right? So it's kind of like, oh, well, she's a, she builds funnels too. You know, people can, I mean, unless you've like got like a, just design chops like no one else, most click funnels pages are recognizable, even mm -hmm. if you've done a subdomain or whatever. Yep. And so 
there is this, I think it was Chris Ducker, who's a big blogger guy, but it was like, you know, you're never going to be seen as an expert if you're not selling something. Yep. People who are selling use click funnels is, is kind of the perception for what it's worth. Unless you have a full on e-commerce commerce and are using WooCommerce or whatever, um, you have to connect some sort of, you know, thrive card or something. So anyways, I hope I answered that. It's not necessary. It's a preference. And it was because he sold me again with expert secret. So I was like, all right, I know there's a better way to play with this. And I've got the scripts and add-ons and all that stuff. So Be, being somebody who can also do all the things in WordPress, um, to bang out a quick, simple, easy funnel without all the fuss and muss, if you don't need it to be exactly the way you want it to be, it's just too fucking easy not to use it. Now, with mm -hmm. that said, is it as reliable as a well-kept WordPress site? I would say no. Yeah. Is it, um, is it everything that you want it and need it to be? No. But that's why there's all the tools out there that are available is because there's not one thing that's the end-all be-all for building funnels, click funnels is awesome. Um, well, can I say too, like yeah. I have Kajabi also. <laughs> so, right. So here's the WordPress chick. And I was like, I don't want to piece all this shit together. Mm -hmm. I want everything in one. So the, the content summit that I'm running, it's all going to be in Kajabi. I'm like, I get free Wistia hosting. Why would I do it anywhere else? Right. And yeah. so it, it connects with, with ConvertKit. So whatever it is, it, it, for you, I think it just comes down to where do I want to spend my time and energy and what can I produce? in the least amount of time that provides the most amount of value. Mm -hmm. I love tools, you guys. I am a geek about this shit. Yeah, me too. Big time. Big time. That's actually, okay, so earlier I said we've been in this space for a long time. Um, I'm fascinated with all of the shit, all of the tools. Um, <laughs> when I was building WordPress websites, it was ultimately for blogs, but what I got a kick out of was like building the fucking website and making it look exactly the way I wanted to. And, and just mm -hmm. um, now that it's a business, it's like, what is the best tool for the job? And I think that's ultimately what it comes down to is, is there are some jobs where WordPress with a regular theme that looks like your brand is the best tool. But yeah, I totally agree. We're on, we're on Kajabi. I love Kajabi specifically for the Wistia hosting. Um, we use ClickFunnels. I'm actually, um, and I keep coming up with these questions. I better get a couple of them out before I get too far. <laughs> here was, here was one of my questions from a few minutes ago is if I do, and this is something that I said to Nathan Frazier, cause he's one of the people that, that I really look up to for doing the, the, the podcast stuff. Um, if I go on and do, a show like I do Facebook live when the, when the bug hits me and I do that show, I can take any of those and turn that into the weekly podcast. Mm -hmm. And then I can still do it whenever, however I want and upload that content in all of the other places, but not necessarily for that one specific podcast show. Right. Yeah. Would you recommend that? Like, is that the way to do it? If I'm cranking out content and I grab the best piece, because I, I get the 20 to 30 minute regular once a week show because of the space that we're in. I just, I don't think I could sit down and say, this is going to be the one weekly podcast show. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. And I, that's the whole thing. I, I think Landon, if you can say it's going to be published weekly, Right. And, and almost like, look at the treasure hunt you guys do. Okay. And it's funny because I was commenting in Tori's group about gamification because I'm like, I'm not a fan. She's like, why not? I'm all, well, this is the dark secrets of my mind because as soon as I'm forced to do something, I totally go into resistance. Right. Doesn't mean I don't appreciate it and it doesn't work. It's a personal thing, but, it's, but so I, so there's sort of this excitement of, is he, Oh my God, there's a new episode out. Especially if you're going to publish more than once. Mm -hmm. then I would just, I would run with it, you know, and just say, okay, it's going to be one to five times a week, whatever floats your boat and, and play with it. And you'll start getting feedback from people. The thing is it's the consistency as long as it's consistent. And so like I did have this for the first time in probably three years, little sort of sabbatical after the first of the year. And I was like, girl, it is what it is. You're launching a software company. There's only so much, you just, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so, but I think doing that Landon 
it, it's especially because everything has been so uniform in this space mm -hmm. and not to not to be a hater but take john lee dumas right i tried listening to this podcast i'm like you're making me a shit dude it's like <laughs> no pun intended um but it was like literally hearing and da -da -da -da, and da -da -da -da, and every single show is just the same and are you ready to ignite i was like oh my god i'm gonna pull my hair out right <laughs> it just did not work for me i was like could you let the guest answer i'd rather let's just spend the next the rest of the show going deeper on that right so like i will take an hour show and I have six or seven questions and then I just let it run. It goes left, it goes right. I'm like, okay, hold on. We're going to go deeper into this, right? So that's sort of the magic to me. And, and he hit something phenomenal. God bless him. He's worked his ass off, but he hit something because nobody else was doing a daily show. Right. And it's like, I, I, but there are people that I think have better conversations and go deeper. And, you know, I'm like, shit, if you're going to get Seth Godin on, don't zip him out in fucking 30 minutes. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of, that's my deal. Like mm -hmm. there's absolutely a time and a place for short little nuggets of info, but I'll be honest with you and everybody that's watching this. I don't do this for you guys. I do Friday night live for me because I get to go deep into a conversation. Mm -hmm. And if you don't stick around to listen to the whole thing, whatever, that's like not why I do it. Um, okay. Well, you totally, you, you, you validated what it was that I felt about the whole podcast thing. So I'm just going to do it the way I'm going to do it. And either mm -hmm. people like it or they don't. And can I just add to that too? Like it, it's, I would just share what you're doing as you're doing it. Right. And be like, all right, I'm launching it. And obviously your goal and then you do this in the group is to to form deeper relationships and connect and to provide value you're teaching a lot and so it's it's kind of sharing that so here's a great example like <laughs> my parents are about two hours away and I, there's a handful of apps for your phone that you can record on too and i'm like well, shit i'm in the car for two hours i'm gonna record a podcast so and these aren't great i would use a headset um but i said to everybody i'm like all right guys we're going to do a test. I'm in the car for two hours. So we're going to record a show and like an ambulance went by. I'm like, let me know if you guys heard that. And people literally listen to the show and we're like, by the way, I didn't hear the ambulance in the background. So whatever. But I just told people I'm in the car. And what I do now is like, I'll test and be like, okay. Like when I drove my daughter to LA, I was in one of those like turbo Mercedes big vans. I'm all, this is way too noisy. I tested it. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to do this to people. But in the car, and people love knowing, oh my God, you were sharing what was, it was just, that's all I would do. So mm -hmm. if, if you're going to just do it off the cuff in a way that works for you, I would, I would make that a piece of it. Like, all right guys, I'm recording today because, or whatever. I mean, whatever works for you. But I think it's, it's almost like a little bit of a disruptor in this mm -hmm. tradition to do it this way. Right. Before we get too far down the road from this, Mike Thompson says, Kim, I'd love your thoughts on Gutenberg. Do you think it'll kill Divi Beaver? Elementor, etc. I don't think so. You know, it's funny because I have a ton of friends that are like developers and stuff. And like, I like, not that I've done a ton. I've written, published a couple articles like on Medium. I love that, that writing space. It's super clean. Um, you know, WordPress is behind the times in terms of UI and everything. So I know that like Beaver Builders jumping in to make sure that there's integrations with with Gutenberg. And I don't, I mean, I think Gutenberg is a long way away from being able to totally customize a site and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I, my understanding was that it was really much more just from an editing experience. So I don't think so. I think it's going to take too long for people have really started adopting because there was a whole, you know, page builders are not page builders and all the hardcore developers. And I'm like, Oh, I'm just, uh, that's an argument for another day. I'm like, whatever gets the job done, who cares? Um, so I don't think it's going to hurt it personally. I'm in the, I'm in the same boat with that. I mean, you know, like motorcycles have been around forever and every decade or so somebody comes out with a different style motorcycle, whatever gets the job done. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just, I don't, and you know what it is too? Here's the crazy thing. And Beaver Builder, because I love those guys to pieces. I've interviewed them a few times and like I wrote a post one time and you, and it was an email, you guys. So this is a great example of repurposing stuff. And for the longest time I was stuck in this space of, well, I have to teach them how to do something. I need to do a screencast. And so I was, cause I found a kind of a home in WordPress with Genesis and studio press, right? Pre Genesis days, just cause I was just sharing how I was figuring out how to use it. Well, it's, it became a little bit elitist, right? This very, um, 
I don't, I don't know. It was a coders sort of happy place. Beaver Builder comes along and I'm like, holy shit, they're making it easy for people to use this tool. So the post was how Beaver Builder is like cheers. Like, you know, you want to go where everybody knows your name. And so, because that's how it is. You go into that group and you know, this, and their group was started by Dave Toomey, who was just a fan of the product. It's over 10,000 people now, but it's, there's nothing but love from the Beaver Builder guys. And all they've ever done is produce a good product, share it and want to care about their community. Like to me, you're not going to Gutenberg fans. They're never going to, I mean, the Beaver Builder fans are never going to get, it, it's not going to happen. They've got their tribe. now. Mm -hmm. I tried no. to spit that out. It didn't come out very well. <laughs> no, it, I totally, I totally caught it. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can grab another question or two before we shift gears a little bit. Somebody asked a question about with all the ways to hack WordPress, wouldn't ClickFunnels be safer? Uh, yeah, yeah. Ask the people who, you know, ClickFunnels went down for an entire day last year and lost. I mean, there are people, one of my, one of my good friends that I met in the mastermind has the highest performing funnel ever with ClickFunnels, right? Trey Llewellyn asked him how he felt about losing a day of sales. So I, I, I you know, I don't know. I, there's not, there's no guarantee that stuff won't get hacked or broken or whatever. And again, it depends. Like I, I don't, I wouldn't prefer publishing content on ClickFunnels to WordPress. Um, and a lot of that's out of habit and it's my own property and there's already, you know, search engine and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think ClickFunnels produces great funnels. I wouldn't use, I've tried using it for membership. I thought it kind of sucked. Um, you know, Kajabi is beautiful for that yet from us and I've seen some beautiful Kajabi sites, but I feel like it's even too much work to make it look like a custom unique branded site, you know? So I'm like, it does what it does really well too. Mm -hmm. Tiffany asks, how do you market your podcast? Here's the funny thing, Tiffany. I was horrible about it at first. I was the worst self promoter forever. Um, obviously I email my list with that and then there's so many ways you can do it, but now, you know, it's, it's, I, I do Instagram, I do all the social channels and whatnot, but ideally with the podcast, the best thing you can do is when you're doing it with other people, that's the beauty of having an interview. So even if you're just doing solo shows, I would mix in some interviews because like, just like this, I shared in my group that I'm on live with Landon tonight, right? So, and so, and I put the link to the group. So if they're not in there and they want to see me live tonight, they need to join Landon's group, right? So there is this leverage you get when you're connecting with other people and, and, you know, you get exposed to someone else's tribe. So the promotion piece, it's all the basics, you know, email, social media, and you keep it going. That's, that's half of it, you know, is to make sure that it's requeued to keep getting out there. And it's, an, it's interesting. So with the lead surveys, because again, we're starting from scratch. Yes, I have an audience. But again, I have a WordPress audience. And if anybody is on my list, I'm not anti my audience from WordPress. It's just proven that they're more interested in how to do stuff with WordPress than the marketing side, which is where I'm happy now on the content side. Mm -hmm. um, but so my daughter, we were talking about the Don't Give a Fox podcast. I'm like, you know, Lexi, the fox, I'm going to have a plush Lexi made and mm -hmm. she's going to have adventures and we're going to create pictures and stories, right? But I'm like, to promote that podcast because of her creative bent, she's going to pull snippets from it. And, and like, she'll pull a Gary V quote and drop it in if I reference it, right? So that stuff. So it's just a matter of then, to quote Gary V, it's like producing micro content from it, right? So if I took, uh, and by the way, guys, I will drop the link in, but today I did publish an interview with Tori. And so, but taking snippets of it and you can do it like anchor. I, there's no reason I shouldn't record a quick anchor guys. If you want to talk content, I talk to Tori, da, 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 right? Five minute segment. And then I download the video. And again, this sounds very, um, laborious, I guess, but I'm like, this is the work, mm -hmm. right? Yep. The promotion and the marketing is the work also. So do it 10 ways sideways. There's tools like relay that where you can go in and make, you know, hundreds of social media images after uploading a few assets. Next thing you know, you've got, you know, I don't know, like a, a couple hundred, you can get 10 Instagram in like two minutes. Um, but you give it to your guests here. This is for you. I made images. What can I do for you? You know, you make it all about them. And you know what, actually, um, I interviewed a guy named Phil Singleton who wrote a book with John Jance of duct tape marketing. And you guys, here's another little snippet. So 
they sent me the book. It's called SEO for growth. And it's all about the fact that content is SEO. You can't have SEO without content, right? Mm -hmm. And so Phil reached out to me to be on the show. They sent me to sign a book signed. And then because the interview was so fun and it was all about podcasting, then he recommended I be on duct tape marketing. My podcasts shot up like 30,000 after being on duct tape marketing. It yep. blew me. And now I'm like, well, I could interview John Jantz. I could have him on the show. Um, but the point, it, he was suggesting what he would do. And again, this is all getting laborious. But if you do an interview, I mean, transcripts are easy. There's a ton of tools that do good AI where they'll interpret it. Or you can go to Rev. Um, but he said, I would provide my guest with the transcripts to publish on their site with a link back. So now that you're getting the SEO juice. So you can go ninja in 12 ways sideways doing this. My best suggestion, though, is to make sure you're putting it out in front of your audience as many times as you can and mixing it up. That's why tools like Missing Letter, where you can set a campaign and change the images and the quotes. So it's not the same post going out all the time. Um, but yeah, have some fun with on the lives. By the way, guys, produce a podcast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you have to tell the world about it. There's two things that I want to say real quick. One, this is fucking fire. <laughs> two, um, well, it gets hot in here. Now I am on fire, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm all these lights. For those of you that are listening to this, um, everybody wants to know what the key is. Like, what is the it that makes it happen? It's fucking <laughs> consistency. And that doesn't mean every Monday at 9 a.m. X. That means do the thing and keep fucking doing the thing, mm -hmm. right? I get, how do I, how do I say this without seeming like a, an arrogant prick? I've been getting a lot of love lately about how amazing this is and the groups, 11,000 people and oh my, and all this. I started doing a fucking thing. And I just kept doing it. If you want to plant a tree, there's two times to do it. 20 fucking years ago and today. <laughs> if you plant the tree today, water it tomorrow. And then water it the day after that. And then, So it's interesting to me that I catch patterns with the people that are doing the thing. And one of my questions for you is, is yes, it sounds laborious. Yes, we do a lot of content creation as well. You create between five and 10 pieces of content a day. That is your work. How many automated tools do you use to publish your content versus do you go to Instagram and you post the thing here and then you go here and you drop that here and then you take the podcast and break it into nine pieces and you go put it in nine places or do you use tools to automate that? I only use two tools <clears throat> to automate and it's funny because I actually have... Uh, an Instagram tool. There's only a couple out there that I could schedule Instagram for. And I do think as we grow this SaaS that I'll have to step into some more of that. You, you can't automate engagement. But so I use CoSchedule. It's built into my site. And it, because it's great, I love being able in the editor, if I publish a post, then boom, schedule it, right? And then I'll put it into the requeue. But the problem with CoSchedule is that if once it gets into requeue, it's in there. I'm like, it's kind of a pain where there are other tools. There's a new one I, that, again, this is the beauty of relationships. Somebody gave me access to Social Web Suite. It's another WordPress plugin. But you can set timeframes on campaigns, right? Like somebody reminded me when my 11 things to stop doing in 2017 was published in January. They're all, uh, it's 2018. <laughs> I was like, damn it, I got to go in and do that. Um, and then missing letter. I like that too. Now, the thing is, I do think Facebook has shown us, I think YouTube is telling us that they want you naturally, in, you know, engaging on the platform. So I think it's sharing um, organically. And so it's just a matter of what you can do. Like, like Facebook groups, like they can be very laborious. And I don't mean that from a negative place, but it's like you want to have as many personal engagements as you possibly can, right? It could be a full-time job. So you have to find windows when that works for you. But you know, I love automation. And you know, here's the crazy thing, Landon. I'm like, okay, so how do I find this balance when I'm launching a SaaS that's going to help you automate segments, right? And it's just the beginning piece. You have to do something with it. So it's like, well, now we need to teach people what to do with those segments and how to have personal conversations. So, you know, automation is always going to be here. I, I think, again, it comes back to, like I told you, I was, I was automatically sending the podcast uh, over to YouTube and I just felt like, 
I don't know, like I could do this better, right? I could mix it with something or I could record a quick, hey guys, this week's podcast, just a quick video, add it to the front, do a different featured image or something, you know, so because I stopped all my service work and, 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 and the outsourcing all a year ago, right? Because I thought I'd be rolling in SaaS money now. <laughs> so we've been bootstrapping life for a while. But the whole thing is like I stopped that. And so now like I actually have the time. I can spend four hours on a post if I feel like it. It is like the time lottery. And so it's like, how can I do this better? You know, and so I'm just playing and practicing with stuff. Mm-hmm. You said that you send emails daily. Yeah. Do you, how do you do that? Like I get you send an email a day, but the writing of the email, how do you, is it I get up and at eight o'clock I'm writing my email and then like, how do you yeah, do And that? there are times where I call it my almost daily email. I am, you know, I drop the ball too. So no, no, that, um, but it's, I just make sure it's the first thing that I do when I, like I get my coffee and I get to my desk and someone's like, do you really do this every day? I'm like, I do. I, it would be so cool. Or I've done them the night before if I could batch stuff, but it's just not the way my brain works because literally I will get ideas based on what happened the day before. Or here's a great example was my son was coming up the stairs and I heard this huge crash. There's something about stairs that we clearly both have issues with. And so I hear this crash and I go out there. I'm like, are you okay? He's like, I dropped my breakfast. He goes, I knew I was going to do that. I kept telling myself, don't drop your breakfast. So I was like, oh my God, this is a great story. And so I say, how often do we do that in our business? We're telling ourselves this isn't going to work, or I know this isn't going to happen. And I don't even remember what I linked to, but it's telling a story. And you know, like when I shared the one about me falling down the stairs, what was I doing? I was looking at my phone to pick a podcast before I walked the dogs. How many times do we, you know, screw up because we're not paying attention to where we're going in our business. We get out of focus, right? And I mean, but I put some comedy in there. I mean, I remember thinking this is not going to end well, right? Like, oh my God. And I got so many emails. Okay, are you okay? I'm like, you guys, I'm totally fine. It was just, I felt like an idiot. But so it's, I just take whatever's happening. And the other thing is like, I have a little notebook and I'll jot down ideas. You know, I email myself shit all the time. Did it do this or do this? Or I put it in my notes. And it's because you'll see ideas, you know? I mean, stuff pops up, you know? Like my daughter was up for the weekend, mistakenly ordered a couch for her apartment to here, trying to put it in a Jetta, okay? And I'm all, so I keep glancing outside. I'm like, okay, well, there's gotta be a story there about when things don't fit and how do you make it work? And you keep persisting her. She and I literally brought a refrigerator down to move to the second floor. We're like, I don't know, we'll figure it out. We'll get it up. Sure as shit. A couple neighbors showed up. How many times do those things happen when you have faith and you believe, right? So I take all of that and just weave it into a story and then drop a link. That's where I, I'm like, everybody can produce content. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, you answered the question. My next question was going to be for all the people that are always asking, how do I come up with content? Like you're saying five to 10 pieces a day. Holy shit. I can't figure out. It's, people are too close to the thing. You need to step back mm-hmm. a little bit. Well, you know, and it's like, you guys there, and there are times where, where like, I know, like I was just looking at um, NJ was saying, he writes in the moment, he struggles to create a lot of free content. Um, and so with that, I mean, I don't know, I just do ideas, right? And it's so funny, because he's even talking about, I'm writing in the grocery store line waiting for checkout. I love taking real life examples. So take it, like when people get pissed off with an upsell, like I'll tell a story about you don't get offended at the grocery store when there's gum and magazines. Well, God damn it. Why are they selling me more shit at here? I'm ready to check out. We don't get offended in these real life scenarios. So I do that stuff all the time, but it, it took a lot of practice to like, to do this sort of twisting of it and like driving my daughter back. Anybody been on I-5 from Southern California? It's pretty boring, right? It's not very exciting. So what do I do? Very carefully. I'm like filming. It was a beautiful day. Skies are blue in the grapevine. There's mountains. And I just did a little quick video. And then driving by Harris Ranch with hundreds of cows. So the caption was, smelling Harris Ranch as I drive by, right? And so people start to get this insight into your personality. I was listening to Ask Gary Vee. I take a screenshot. So those are all my stories. So people kind of went along the journey with me home. And it was just, and and I'll get comments like, you're totally funny, or, or where were you, or whatever, you know? And it's just, I do that with the dogs, or playing fetch. I'm like, you're supposed to bring the ball to me, but I have to walk and go get it. And so 
all of those little things, like that's not, you might be thinking a value add, but it's just that relatable piece. You know, that's not maybe the in-depth long form content or a cornerstone piece of content or teaching like this, but it is that connection piece that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Linda says thousands of cows. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. You can smell it way before you get near Harris ranch. Uh, but the restaurant serves some really good steak and hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so yeah. content where it's headed, meaning one of the messages that I'm always preaching from up on high to all of the people that follow us here in this group is, and I'm not the first person that says this, Gary V said this, he probably wasn't the first person to say this, but he's the one that popularized it. If you're going to be a business in three years from now, you've got to be a media company first for the thing that you do. Yep. That's where this content thing is headed. And there's a reason that we as humans like it less polished because it's fucking real. Mm -hmm. So for somebody who owns a business who hasn't like really figured that out and broken it down and begun that process, if somebody was at the beginning of their journey creating content, what would I, I get the, I get the, the right answer is whatever it is you're comfortable with doing. What would be the first two or three things somebody ought to do? content wise. Okay. So the first thing is your customers, your business, just simply start there. And if you haven't heard of, I'm Marcus Sheridan. Okay. Uh, the river pool and spas guys, he wrote a book and I'm, I cannot look Google, go to Amazon, Marcus Sheridan, quick little story. <clears throat> and again, this story is going to connect with you guys. Um, so Pay attention to the fact that I keep pulling up stories every time I'm trying to give an example of something. So Marcus Sheridan um, in 2008 had, and I'm, don't quote me on all of this, but a fiberglass pool company. And what happened in 2008? The economy went upside down. So who's buying pools, right? They had thousands of dollars lost in, in pool contracts, canceled people needing deposits back. And so he had to cut their marketing budget. And so he's like, well, what can I do? I'm just going to start, I'm just going to start blogging about the questions people have literally saying stuff that people didn't want to put on websites. How much does a fiberglass pool cost? Right. And so he would give the example and he would say it starts at 20,000 and here's what things cost. So he literally just started answering questions. So what I would do, even if you are new and I know you guys talk about your ideal customer avatar, right. And all of that. So if you know who that person is, like in a way where I was a few years ago used to be my avatar. I don't, you know, and it's different for the software than it is for Kim Doyle. Um, but, but really it's like, I have, what are my questions? Right. And I engage with people every day. So you just start and I would just start creating content, answering questions. That is the easiest thing to do. And if you're not sure, then you find somebody in a similar space in a similar market, or you use sites like Haro or, or um, Ask the Public, I think is another one. You use those tools to find out what people are asking and you just start answering. That's it. it, it that is the simplest place to start is do that. And then the second thing, and it's kind of a mindset thing, but I would recommend you shift your perspective from thinking it's, it's never going to be done for starters. And you have to learn to enjoy the process. You have to get excited about the fact that, oh, I'm going to do this. And then I did it better. Like I look at you know, I started podcasting. You guys, I talk over myself all the time. I make up words. I, I stopped worrying about the ums and ahs. But as I kept listening to myself, I would catch myself. And I still say, I use the word totally. I graduated high school in 88. What does that tell you? Like it never left my vocabulary, but that's what endears you to people. So you have to look at it as a mastery of a craft. Stop looking at it as a start and end point. It is all about how you approach it. And what the next thing I would do is, is look at the content that draws you in. Like, why do you guys show up on a Friday night to a live stream in a Facebook group, right? I mean, my life isn't super exciting. I didn't have better, I'm just kidding. You know what I mean? But it's kind of like, why do you do this? You're getting something out of it. What brought you into this? Look at what you like with people sharing. There's some, again, it's, it's that whole enough about me. What do you think about me? That marketing is not working. It's not working with Facebook ads. It's not working with paid stuff. People are tired of people who just pimp themselves, you know? So, so pay attention to what resonates with you. And again, I don't care if you practice for a month, 
but practice creating. And then at some point you do have to hit publish. Right. Yep. Charmaine says, I don't like sloppy content. Does less polish equal sloppy? I don't think it needs to, but I think it often ends up that way. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it definitely can be one of those. And, you know, you have to really get clear on, on it's, it's kind of like the difference between personal and private, right? Some people think I'm comfortable sharing everything. I'm like, not everyone's comfortable hearing everything. So, <laughs> so you have to know your audience, right? Like don't dump your drama out into everybody. Here it is. I'm transparent. Well, I don't, I don't need to know that about you, you know? So it really is that element and it's, it's knowing your audience. So here's a great example is we are going to be working with an advertising company uh, for lead surveys because I got crystal clear this year. I'm like, I'm betting down on my strengths and it is not advertising. It is not accounting and it's not administrative, right? And even long form content I can do, but there will be somebody hired at some point this year who wants to get in there and do keywords. Like I want to do this. I want to create stuff and show up and engage and talk to customers. Um, <clears throat> But, you know, so the sloppy piece, but what they were telling us, this is really interesting. So we were talking about the initial, you know, we could do a trial funnel, a book funnel, a webinar funnel. So all those things are there. But he said, what's working really well? One of the products um, for a customer of theirs is like, like a gun holster. I'm all, clearly he doesn't sell in California, but where you can write, wear a gun out. He said, the video ads that work the best are at trade shows when people just take out their phone and they're recording a, them selling the gun holster to a customer and why they should have it or whatever. So it's a real engagement, you know? And so I think it's all in context. Sloppy has to be taken in the context. Like this would look weird if like, you know, I mean, I remembered to turn the lights on before we started, but had I not, I would, Oh, sorry, I turned the lights on, you know, or, or if the audio sucks. So you have to take the, the sloppy with the context of what it is and where it's being done. Mm -hmm. Yep. I totally agree. And I would even say that I, I would take that a step further and say, from my perspective, with the way I go about it, I'm going to produce the content that I'm going to produce. And if somebody thinks it's too sloppy or they think it's too formal or they think it's too always the same scenery, they can go the fuck away. That's just me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to attract the clients and, and the customers that want the way that I do it, not want something different for me. Um, and I think that's for the getting clients thing, selling a SaaS is a totally different thing, but if you're building a brand off your personality, hmm, yeah, right. Create the content that you're going to create. There are people that uh, are bland and monotone and brown paper bag, and they've got an audience that wants to hear about the thing they want to talk about from that kind of personality. Mm -hmm. But yeah, where the content, I, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say, you know, to that point too, again, that is that um, I remember listening to a guy, a, a story about a guy that had a podcast. He was like, I don't say a neurosurgeon, but somewhere in this way high up medical space. And he only got like 400 downloads a month, but he was selling a piece of equipment <laughs> that was hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was such a targeted, audi targeted audience. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm very animated. There was a live stream. I don't even have, do you remember that commercial? Thanks, Easter Bunny. Bark, bark. Do you remember that? Yep. Well, I, something came up. I did that. And somebody's like, it's the first time I've seen somebody cluck like a chicken on a live stream, right? And I'm like, it, which, it's just who I am. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if it's not you, but you have to pay attention. I had a friend that was doing live streaming and she would get up there trying to be polished and very, you know, and I was like, girl, you're sarcastic and pretty sassy. Like, this is why no one's sticking around. Like nobody wants to watch you just talk about, then you can do this and then you can that if it's not natively right innately who you are. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, Tiffany, Tiffany's one of our star students. She's been around us for a while. I'm digging the convo, but I have no idea about a lot of this language. Partly Tiffany, that's because <laughs> Kim and I are both tool geeks and tech geeks. Um, it, it's, Totally good. Everybody's answering your, your questions. <laughs> um, actually though. Yeah, it was Chris. It's software as a service is what we're launching. It's a piece yep. of software, <laughs> but that okay. implies like the monthly subscription. <laughs> Tiffany WordPress is a software as a service. ClickFunnels is a software as a service. Um, yeah. Anyways. Dropbox uh, is a software as a service. Gmail. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Okay. Man, I've got a bunch of questions that I want to ask you offline. (laughs) (laughs) Not because it's not because it's stuff that, that these people can't have. It's, it's uh, boy, I could totally go into geek mode on all the things that you're working on. Um, Well, I'm happy to give you an account lane and if you want to play with it. Sure. Totally. Yeah. And that's, I appreciate that. That's not even it. I know know it wasn't. You're like, that was the background, but totally right. Uh But Again, that's where the relationships come in. And it's like, we, we chose not to do a free beta or any of that stuff. And it's like, okay, but I know people that I value and respect and it's like, Uh they'll be honest, they'll be direct and whatever, you know? So, Mm -hmm. but yeah. (laughs) Chris said, would I be out of line if I said that fast? <laughs> Not in this crowd. Oh my God. That's totally funny. I love that. <laughs> nope. What is your favorite type of content to create and why? Audio. <laughs> Audio, hands down, because um, I, I think because I love it so much. And there's, you know, the fact that, I mean, I spent, you know, that was how I even found out about internet marketing. I had bought, you know, Mark Victor Hansen was one of the creators of Chicken Soup for the Soul. I spent like 10 years in the book industry. And so I had access to all this stuff. I bought his mega speaking empire because I was a speech major for a while in college. So it's pretty cool that I ended up full circle with a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I was listening to this and there was like 12 CDs and there was this guy on there that was talking about internet marketing. And I was like, what? Like, well, yeah. And especially... I, just a little snippet, right? So I spent the bulk of my adult working life in retail management. Enough said, right? And so I lost my husband in an accident in t- 2003. I'm like, I can't work 60 hours a week. My kids were six and two. I'm like, this is bullshit. And I just always knew I was supposed to do something else, right? I'd had a scrapbook store, like a retail scrapbook store for a couple of years. Um, and so I'm listening to this thing and you guys, I was, my husband actually had been like programming it in eighth grade. So he was my go-to guy for the computer. Right. And then it was like, shit, if I can put together Ikea furniture, I'm going to figure this out. And I think because of where I was at in my life, nobody was going to question me. Right. Because of the loss. And it wasn't for like, it wasn't until 2008. I had a little cushion. I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. But it was because of hearing this guy talking about it. I had gone to a conference in the city. It was a real estate expo. And there was an offshoot and I listened to somebody else selling eBooks on stuff. And I'm like, Oh, this sounds like I got really excited. It wasn't network marketing, no judgments. Tried that. Um, It wasn't retail. Didn't want to do that. And so I just, you know, but it was audio is my favorite because it got me through some of the worst times of my life. I mean, Tony Robbins was my first personal power in 1992. I had the box of cassette tapes in the car. Um, but there's something like I constantly am putting stuff into my mind. Like obviously I'm a big reader, but I don't know, you know, it's like you get to a point where I, I wanted to move through my life differently. And so I'm like, I keep positive people. I'm a skirt about movies. I watch shit that makes me feel good, period. It can be a drama, but I want it to have some meaning to it, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but I can listen to audio anywhere. Yep. Miss NJ asks, Kim, if you do video, wouldn't you be able to get video written, transcribed, and audio for repurposing? Yeah, absolutely. You know what it is? I hate doing my friggin' hair. <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's like, awesome. It's, I'm, I'm like super honest. And it was like, and here's the other thing was for a while, like I didn't want to get on camera. And you guys, I'm not shy, but it was like, I put on weight sitting at home the last 10 years. And it's like, the truth is nobody gives a shit, right? Nobody really cares if you're being honest and genuine. And so I was very hesitant about getting in front of the camera. Okay. So there's that. And then the other piece was, I don't want this to be sort of like, again, not dissing the be live community. Right. But I felt like so many shows were started and it was like a circle jerk, like people just sitting there and just talking. And I'm like, I need to have some, like, like you, you came to this with a specific, we're going to talk about content tonight. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it was really like, I want to be able to, to <clears throat> provide some value, have some fun, but also feel pretty comfortable. So yes, I now get my hair with the keratin. I'm like, that saves me a little time, right? <laughs> but it's like wearing a scarf when it's hot. I, so I'm like, okay, you better start learning to roll with the ponytail more often, girl, because what the hell? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yep. And it just is. And it's like, you get to this point too, where it's like, I'm sorry, but I had breakfast with a friend. We're like, what the fuck like 45 plus 
everything's falling apart. I'm like, all the sun damage is showing up. I'm like, what is going on? Like, my hands look crepier. Like, all this shit starts happening. And I'm like, I, you know, my other little saying, I have stickers too, is just show up. I was like, I am just going to friggin' show up and do it. People like me or they don't. And so I, I feel like it was a little safer for me because I had built up this audience who had been listening to me. Like, one of my most favorite tweets ever, somebody was like, I think Kim Doyle would fun, be fun to have a pint with. I'm like, I totally would be. I prefer beer to wine. But I was like, so clearly, and I'm like, God, if somebody's willing to listen to me talk for an hour, they are like my right tribe. Yep. You know what I mean? And, that, and, and so you can, you absolutely can repurpose um, everything. And, and I will. So part of that is like, I'm going to do a, uh, sh a show, just show up TV. Because I'm like, I, I find that too. Do you, do you think this, Landon, like with content, um, oh, <laughs> you guys are, thank you. My hair looks beautiful. It is in dire need of coloring, but we'll leave that alone. Um, <laughs> I think that it, that the market is craving these honest conversations, right? Sure. Of mm -hmm. just saying, you know, oh, okay, like I was not comfortable and it's very easy. Here's a great, another little story, guys. Um, so I'm doing this uh, content creator summit. I have asked Landon to speak at it and I was connected to someone else and she, um, say, she was like, she goes, it's real safe to be on camera from here up, right? She got called out at a creative live with Mel Robbins and they made her stand up and she did it. She's like, how can I be a life coach to other people if I'm not willing to do this, right? You're going to get the trolls. You're going to get the people that support you and appreciate you. It's just part of life. But you know, there is this like, oh God, thank God you said what I was feeling or thinking or whatever. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I don't know. Sometimes it's like, oh, for fuck's sake, I cannot do any more pe personal deep diving. I'm like, just get dressed and get on camera. Like, just stop thinking about this, you know? Yep. So there is a, there's a time and a place for everything. It's like, I can't always be like in this deep, I've done enough personal soul searching shit. Like I just, I do, I listen to spiritual stuff, but I'm like, there's a time and a place. And I just go with whatever I'm feeling. Yeah. <laughs> there's a rant. <laughs> No, it's it's good because I mean this is the conversation that needs to be had. There's a reason and this is this is like the backbone of what I talk about. We're in what and I didn't coin this, right? We're in a relationship economy. The reason yes. that all of this stuff is is being so wanted and held on to this real stuff is because we want the fucking connection right? Mm -hmm. And we've all kind of figured out over the last couple of years, really the last year or so is that, oh, the internet means that I can actually connect with people that I actually give a damn about. Right. That's why they all show up and watch Friday Night Live is because yes, they like the content. Yes, there's some entertainment in it, but it's fucking real, right? And they feel a part of this with you, exactly. right? They're like, they're in this safe space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I make One more little quick too. story. Go ahead. And you what? I make up words too. And I love it. <laughs> I, I love made up words. So this is the stuff that, and you guys, I, I think if you're, if you're not producing content or if you've been doing it a certain way, like I was like, I'm so tired of doing how to make shit with WordPress or how to use this plugin or how to do this where it's not getting me. Okay, great. Some affiliate sales, but I'm like, that's not building me as the brand. Right. And so um, there was a friend of mine who had been in this space and he posted, there's this real small, it's a WordPress mastermind, but it's just a safe space, like 20 people, right? Have conversations. And he kind of poured his heart out. He just said, you guys, I am on my knees. Like, I can't do this anymore. I need to get a job. I really don't like web design. I feel like I've been fighting this for so long. Excuse me. And it was, it was a heartfelt outpouring, right? Everybody, I'm sorry. You know, we love you, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. And I thought about that. And so I recorded an anchor that night and I'm like, I just did this. And it was probably one of the longest anchors, even though it's only five minutes, mine tend to be like two minutes. And I just said, you know, the scary thing is we take a risk as an entrepreneur and you say, okay, I'm going to go and do this thing on my own. But it's, it's almost riskier to say, I cannot do the shit I don't like doing anymore. I'm not doing it. Like I hit a wall. I'm like, fuck this website stuff. I'm like, I cannot do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Am I willing to do what I have to do? Yeah, yeah. I, at that point, I was like, I'll get a job over keep doing this, right? I don't like feeling sick every time I open my email. But so I just did this little anchor recording. I'm like, 
you guys, everybody goes through this and you, and, and it's, so there's this risk and it's like, and it feels contrary that you have to say, I'm going to stop doing work that's paying the damn bills. I mean, more so if they're not, but you have to, it, it's very contrary. Like I can't do this anymore. Right. And the crazy thing is everybody will worry about you or, or say things. Or, and I mean, I've got an awesome family, but it was like, there's this fear, right? And for a long time, I was building websites because it was like, I'd get my parents, oh, congratulations, another client and stuff, you know, and they are my biggest champions. But it's like, all of a sudden, it's, it's you're crazy for doing it until, you, until it takes off. Mm -hmm. Then we get accolades, right? Again, Steve Jobs, like you, you can look at so many entrepreneurs who are probably, they, here's to the crazy ones, right? We've all heard that speech. So you're crazy until it starts paying off. And then it, it all flips. And, but but the point is, it was that him producing this raw, real thing, and I just wanted to share my thoughts. And from that, because then I responded to him, and I did this anchor, and he was like, you know, how do you do it? How do you not drop the ball? And I was like, I drop the ball every day. I'm like, too many emails are in my inbox where oh, I keep them at the top so that I respond to them. But I'm like, I just have learned to not give a shit. And it's not that I don't care, but oh my God, like I would really be in therapy every other day if I worried about dropping the ball, right? Yeah. And so it's these stories that people are craving. It doesn't mean you don't do the teaching and the talking and the tangibles, but there's a balance, I think. Yeah, it's, it's the relationship economy. We want to have, we want to feel connected to those we're doing business with. Mm -hmm. um, we want to feel connected to those who were asking to guide us. And the connectivity of the internet now, especially with like this, like you just said, fucking 10 years ago, this would have been a pre-recorded thing that would have been like a TV show. I don't <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that anymore. We can fucking yeah. talk to these people live that are, that are watching. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just where this is headed. Smaller tribes, more specifically connected to you mm -hmm. because of you. And the yeah. thing that you're doing or the thing that you're helping them with is, is almost secondary. That's where this is headed. And another Gary B quote that I love is don't be so fancy with your time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what the hell? I'm like, if this dude can stop and DM somebody for fuck's sake, like I can respond to a comment or I have never said no to being on a live stream. A pop, I don't care the size, the name, the brand, it's never like pre-qualifying. And mm -hmm. that was this space. Well, what's in it for me? Like if I'm going to give you my time because I'm the guru, you know, what's in it for me? And it's like, don't you get that? Like you have an opportunity to put yourself in front of a whole new audience. And if, if, and, and, and I'm not saying that we don't all have time schedules, right? Cause shit happens. It's like, if the timing doesn't work, that's one thing. Uh, but don't be so fancy with your time that you can't, and you know, what's funny. <laughs> I'm just going to share this with you, but like I met Gary Vee. I was at one of these masterminds. I go upstairs to do a little video testimonial. I come down. I had left my phone in the room, just me in the elevator. The doors open. Who was standing right there? And how do we respond? Gary Vee! Like I was like a five-year-old, right? And he's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, oh my God, I love your books. And I'm like, can we get a selfie? He's like, absolutely. I'm like, oh my God, I don't have my phone. He goes, I'll take it. Give me your email. He, he took the picture and I had it emailed to me. So he truly is that gracious. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so don't be so fancy with your time. It's, you know, like whenever I try to encourage people, I'm like, leave a comment, do a little bit more than like or love if you can. And even if it's stepping outside of your comfort zone, you know, but it's like you build relationships by listening. People want to be heard. They want to know they matter. And when you're starting out in this space and you think, okay, well, everybody's talking about this or everybody's doing this. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's sort of that wrap your head around how many people you literally have the opportunity to do business with and connect with. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. I mean, there's too many cool people out there. Two things to that. Um, one, you brought up the whole making the shift because whatever the fuck you're doing is no longer working. We're also getting into a, a time where what you enjoy doing is becoming more important than what you're able to do. Mm -hmm. So for those of you guys that are listening, and I know a couple in my tribe that are currently like in this transition process, this is the thing that I've done for X number of years and that's how I pay the bills, but I want to do something else. Mm -hmm. Make sure your shit's handled 
but have faith yeah. that your shit's handled and step into the thing that you want to do. Yeah. That's one. And then the second thing is, is it doesn't matter if it's an audience of one or not, right? When you have the opportunity to be put in front of somebody you don't know and you're building a brand, fucking do it. I haven't turned down it either. Right? Because there could be one person that hears that thing that I said that they needed to hear that. Who am I to say no to spreading my message? And I just, I, man, that, that one kind of gets me because I, I know a couple of people that are like that. And I'm just like, man, you are building a castle on sand. Just fucking wait. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. And so, you know, and it's, it's, it's kind of, even if there's a, even if you just say, oh my, I so appreciate the opportunity. I am not going to be available to do anything for three months or whatever, but it's, it's like, I just love that. Don't be so fancy with your time, you know, that you can't be a human being. It's just, it's the most ridiculous thing to me. And it's someone had said, you know, in terms of, of, um, you know, how do you do this? Right. And especially like, I get it. If, if you are shifting from that thing of, um, okay, this has been paying the bills and I don't like it. Are, is there a time? And you guys, I would say <laughs> probably at year three or four, I didn't like it. It took me to year nine. Okay. And I didn't, I, I, I just finally cut the cord. I, I took that, you know, I always think of that scene from one of the Indiana Jones movies where he's got us to the chalice, you know, where he's got to step off and the bridge doesn't appear until he takes a step. And it, it's, it's been like that. And it's been scary as shit. And there's been weepy afternoons and, but never has there been a regret. I'll tell you that much. There's been frustration, but there's never been a regret about anything. And, you know, it's just, I don't know, these people that are doing that, you know, building a castle and stand your point. It's like, there's too many people now. And it's kind of, you know, I was talking about like the circle jerk. It's sort of like even, okay, the gurus only interviewing the gurus. I'm like, enough. Like there's so many other people. Too many times I tell people, I'm like, I'll hop on Skype. I mean, time permitting, there's definitely times I'm like, ask me a question. You guys, I will do these things because of like my business, there's only like two monetization pieces at this point. If I do a content course or I might just be doing the summit or I might do a membership, that's, so that's all Kim Doyle. And then it's lead service. That is it. Like I'd rather just give away as much as I can engage with my audience and then here's how we can do business. If it works, it works, you know, mm -hmm. but, but you have to find that. I don't know. It's, it's fascinating to me. And a lot of the gurus, I see them trying to do, like I said, more of this personal stuff and I'm all, yeah, but are you really down here where your people are? <laughs> I don't know. Yep. And I'm in, I'm in the same boat. Um, NJ said something back here a couple of minutes ago. She said question for Kim typing. And then the next thing that I saw question on what Kim is saying, typing, there's, there's this thing going on now where people are doing summits and live things and they have membership or list requirements or they won't do it. Thoughts on that. What's well, funny. You should say that because that's, I'm doing this content creator summit and the request is great. If you can share it, it's not required period. But when it, what's been interesting is I only had one person come back and say, well, as long as there's no requirement to do this, because, and I was like, I don't even want you around. Like mm -hmm. it, it's not a requirement, but if, and, and obviously the goal is to get people to share it. It's a ton of work. It's a ton of value, you know, and that's something that anybody who is in a group who, about not being salesy understands it, it takes a lot to do this and say, well, but you can buy the all access pass, right? It is. I mean, I, I'm not going to get my feelings hurt. I know it's going to work. There's going to be value. Some people will buy, some people won't. Some people will say they'll promote and they may not. Shit happens. Like, but it, it was the attitude and the approach. So, you know, it's just one of those things. And, and trust me, you guys, I've also looked at, because there's a couple people that I'm having on this that maybe don't have a name or don't have an audience, but I'm like, you're just a good human being. And I want you in my sphere. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so I was just like, what's going to provide the most value for this? So all of that stuff, you know, it's kind of funny, Landon. I, I made a comment in because WordPress, I do think some of those communities that are like the developers and the web devs, they're very anti the marketing circles, right? And to the point of, you know, oh yeah, want see my Lamborghini and see this. And that, 
I don't give a shit what you want. I could care less. I really could care less. Like mm -hmm. it's, I just, I don't care. I don't care if you want a Prius or you want, you know, a, a Bugatti. It makes no difference to me. Are you a decent human being that, that does what you say you're going to do? Like, but it's this, it's kind of this anti stance that I see is also going to come back and bite people in the ass. You see with the marketing, I'm like, can you be for something? It's mother Teresa, right? Ask me to march for peace. And I will ask me to march against Vietnam and I will not be there. So there's a difference in, and it's these little subtleties. Like most people probably, I mean, I get snarky and silly on my podcast and people know when I've got a definitive opinion, but I get tired of the haters who I am so tired of product launches. I'm like, fucking don't do it. <laughs> Nobody's telling you to do that. Like yep. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's kind of like that. Change the channel, turn the, whatever you don't like, you don't have to be in that space for. Cause the thing is like, like I will never be that person that has to vent on social media. I totally vent, but I keep it off because every time I tell that story, I feel shittier. Yep. Right. So can I get it out of my body once and friggin' move on, right? And so it's who you are and who you move through the world that's going to resonate with your tribe. And that goes much wider than people think. Yep. Fact. Sharon asks, what is your event? Sounds interesting. Um, it's called Content Creator Summit. And what's, what's fun about it is I've stepped into like with the live streaming, I'm connecting with all new people sort of, you know, so it's just going to be all on content creation. So I've got people that are live streamers, podcasters, writers. And what's fun is like, I've got Landon and Ben and Tori are all talking about how you guys have used content to build communities on Facebook. Cause I think it's super unique. And it, to me, it's like the, the Facebook 2.0 mm -hmm. kind of it's, I mean the Facebook groups 2.0, like mm -hmm. it's this new, I don't know. There's just a ton of cool stuff happening. Um, so it's like four days of 24 speakers and the, everything will be free for 24 hours, I think. And then if you want access to everything, there's a, a pass to get audio video transcripts. It's first week in March, I think. Six mm -hmm. And I'm scared yep. you guys, this is a ton of work. And I'm like, Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 Okay. Um, boy, we've, We've been all over the all over the place as it applies to content. Something you said a minute ago really caught my attention because this is something that I get I get asked about from a from a standpoint that I don't really agree with, and I understand why they're asking. But you said as you move into this new thing, there's essentially two pieces that you're going to monetize, and the rest you're just going to give away. Mm -hmm. And I get asked a lot. Why do you give away so much info? Why do you give away so much of the thing that you're charging for? And there's, there's two interesting things to that. And I'm, I, I'll say what I think and why I do it, but I'm curious why that's your take. Why are you going to just give so much away and only monetize a couple of pieces of it? What's your reasoning behind that? Um, the self-awareness, to be honest with you. And it's because I got to a point, like I've done coaching, right. And I've done high ticket coaching and it kind of goes back to what I said about gamification. One, when I get way too scheduled and somebody is demanding of my time, even though I've set it up, I totally go into resistance. Right. And I, there was a frustration level for me with coaching when people weren't doing the work in between. I'm like, I love you, but I don't want to just get on the phone and shoot the shit with you, right? Like, if we're going to do that, let's just do that. But the in-between waffly stuff, because it's disheartening. It's not that you guys, again, there's plenty of times I've got too much to do and didn't get it all done, but it's disheartening and it's, it's the people who won't implement and they stay in the peripherals is what I call it, right? Where, well, the logo looks great. The website looks great. And I've mapped out my, my, my mastermind and my products and all of this, but I'm like, you haven't fucking published one thing in like two years. Like just get inside of what you're doing. Right. So for me with the giving it away, I just, it's, 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 it's that no such thing as a selfless good deed. It makes me feel good. And it it's, there's this like weird accountability that happens. Like the more I show up in the group, the more I want to show up in the group, the more I get po I podcast, the more I do this, the more I want to do it. And because anybody who's been in this space, meaning online marketing and online business, I don't mean that you're necessarily, you could be selling canoes, whatever. Right. But you get 
that there is this challenge. So my goal <laughs> two years ago, pre SAS was recurring revenue. I'm like, I have got to set this up so that I have the space. I, the project stuff. I mean, I got to a point one time where I was like, I had $10,000 going out in salaries and stuff. And it was like, what is going to work for my life? What is going to work for me? Right. And so I love software. I love the idea of that. So I just, to me, like, it's so easy to do this. Like, this is fun. And I did a manifesto. It's on my YouTube channel. And I was like, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it because shit, right? I know firsthand life is too short. And so the free thing to me is I can connect with more people when I'm not attaching what I have to charge for it. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a self-awareness thing. I, I feel better about it. And then, you know, for a little bit, I was doing like a, a done with you coaching session. And it's like, I would do those things if somebody asked because, but we get on and we screen share and I open up lucid chart. I get too hyper. I open up lucid chart and I'm mapping out what they should do and how they can back into stuff because I paid for shit. That's airy fairy. Right. I'm mm -hmm. like, give me some tangibles. There's, there's this need to do something tangible. You know, it just, I, I don't know. It's maybe it's like that Gary V like, I'm going to give you so much shit that I'm going to guilt you into buying my book. I don't know, but it, it simply feels better for me to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't yep. have the energy to build funnels for everything else. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You nailed it. And there's, there's a thing in there that you didn't bring up. And I, and I thought I had this thought earlier when you said this in you making this shift and you going and doing all of this stuff that you enjoy doing and you're putting yourself out there and you're just like, here's, here it is. This is, this is it. This is how to do it. This is what it is. You're going to explode over the next year or two. And it's because of that you have the ability to just be you tell stories about your life and you're like, people are getting to know you, but then it's, it's not all behind a paywall. Right. right? I don't yeah. want, we have a course, we have now a new little mini course and we have a, a little paid group and we do coaching. That's fantastic. I want to do this to where I find the dozen people that are like, I want the juice juice. Yeah. yeah. I want it to like change my world mm -hmm. and I want to spend my time with people that take that and fucking implement it because watching somebody with the info, not fucking do the thing is like, <sighs> it hurts your heart. Right. Be because it's like, what, you know, what's going to happen or they buy the next course and it's like, okay, I'm glad you invested in that course, but you know what's coming. Right. And it's, 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 I remember seeing somebody complain um, cause a friend had shared it with me and it was, I think it was an Amy Porterfield course on webinars. Okay. I don't know Amy personally. She seems like a really good human being. So there's zero judgment with Amy, but somebody posted in the group about, I, I, the gist was now I have to buy lead pages and I have to buy this. And it's like, you know, at some point there's a responsibility on the consumer to do the due diligence. Right. And I know that you don't know what you don't know. But this idea, okay, we're going to roll back a bit. Like 1998, open the scrapbook store. Do you want to know what our costs were at the time? It was three grand a month, rent and cam charges. We hadn't sold a damn thing. And you got to sell a lot of paper and stickers to make up $3,000, right? That was bare bones operating costs, us not taking salaries. So this idea that there's not costs involved, but there is a skewed perception in this space, right? And to your point, like when people see, wow, he gives this away for free, if I, if he's doing this for free and I could do this, right. For me, again, it's that self-awareness. Like I liked, I'd rather just show up when it works for me. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm doing a mini course called everything is content. And I was like, that's fun. I've been talking about it. So that'll go. Or I was thinking about doing maybe a $47 course on anchor or do I do, because it's like, I even thought about doing a uh, content creators premium and we might, but I have to know, Kim, can you maintain this? can you deliver a, a tangible training every month that's going to deliver for 37 or 47 bucks at that level, right? Yep. Is that something you can do? Because remember, you've never actually owned a software company. You don't know what you're doing. You have to build this from the ground up. And so it's like, can I, I I'm so, I could keep growing this group without a zero, any attachments to it. It feeds me. It totally feeds me. Mm-hmm. Yep. I totally agree. Totally agree. 
I mean, you have to have some strategy, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't, the whole free thing, it's like, you can't do it. It's, it's so altruistic almost to think, you know, la 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 la. it's like, I I do have bills to pay. I do have a business. There is, Mm -hmm. but it was like, I just, I don't know. I stepped back. I was so tired of project pricing. And so it's, you have to find out what you need and then kind of do that backwards engineering. Mm -hmm. Yep. So when I first, here's a little, here's a little story. When I first got into this thing that is the sales gorilla and gorilla marketing, I was basically, I was, I call it, I was dragged into it. I was talked into it. Um, It was not something that I thought I would go do. It was like the furthest thing from my mind that I would teach getting clients or whatever. I leveraged being able to go get clients to do digital marketing for so I could go away from the nine to five that I had for 10 years. And I, I did the sales thing for 15 and I, I got, I don't know, a half a dozen clients and I was doing the client work thing and I was paid well. And I was like, fuck this Mm -hmm. because there's no outlet for this thing. Right. Kim and we were doing, Ash and I were doing this parenting thing and um, there was an outlet there for this thing, right? My kid's mom, Kim, we parent different, right? And so some of the things that I saw us dealing with versus her dealing with <clears throat> and that whole outlet of what it was that I wanted to share and I started getting the client work and I was like, eh, this sucks, mm-hmm. right? Doing a course, right, is different because here's the thing and I can do the group and all of that with it. But like doing client work like you did. Yes. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, <laughs> I'm going to, I started this by doing a barter, right? I was having some tile done in my house and I looked at their website and it was heinous. I'm like, you guys want to barter? Like it was an old ugly Yahoo site. And I'm like, I'll pay for the tile, but would you do the bathroom, the hall bathroom too? And said, so, and they're like, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Everything's going fine. The website's up. It's pretty and stuff. Months later, they don't want to pay for maintenance. They don't want to get ongoing support. The wife is like, well, how do I do this? And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, you're not, I'm not, you know, and she's like, well, you handed me this. I said, that's fine. I said, I'm happy to do that. Can you come over and show me how to tile the kitchen now? Hung up on me. I'm like, well, because the point is, it's like, you want my knowledge, you know, mm-hmm. another local business. Well, you can come down, you know, once a week and, and talk to us. And I'm like, that's fine. It's $150 an hour. Oh, I'm like, it's, you know, so you get to this point and you guys, I'm only an hour from San Francisco, two hours from Silicon Valley, but I'm in this bedroom community. I'm like, I cannot, I cannot spend all my time convincing you why you need to be a part of the 21st century. And if it, and it you're going to be out of business if you don't do this, this, if you don't step into this is where things are going. Right. But it, it, you have to know yourself. Right. And even with the courses land and see, like I, because there's times like I did a content strategy course and I'll tell you guys, this was the easiest thing I have ever sold in my life last spring because I had gone back to fundamentals. I was preaching the preaching, right? Mm-hmm. Like just trying to get people to come back to, you know, writing and producing and publishing and getting better at your craft. And so they had been watching me do this. I'm sharing it all. I'm sending daily emails. And I just said, I'm going to do a content strategy class. I only want 10 people in it. Three people are like, I want a spot. I want a spot. I want a spot before I even was ready to go. And I did it live over four weeks. And it was one of those like, Oh my God, I cannot believe. But, and so I didn't even have to sell it because they saw me walking the walk. Right. But then there are certain things with a course for me. I'm like, are you willing to not even launch it, but like you have to maintain it and you have to update it and stuff. Right. And again, I know myself. So it's like, I'd be better at a membership where I can just be like, here's how we're going to use anchor this month. Here's how we're going to publish on medium. Here's how we're going to do Insta stories or whatever. But even then I have to, I'm really starting to debate this. Like, can I deliver that value or could I do one offs if I wanted and just keep driving the group? I don't know where any of it's going to go. I honestly don't. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do know that I've got a software that's going to start producing. Right. And so there's that, but it's just, I think you have to know. And with your niche, like the, the client stuff get without being salesy, right. Getting clients, all of that. There's a level of evergreen to that. Right. And there are some 
like to your point, we were talking about principles versus tactics and, mm-hmm. and there's solid strategies and there's a level of engagement. So, you know, I, I did this whole um, uh, Je- WordPress Genesis for beginners, right? Teaching the users how to use that. And it was like, shit, they just did 2.0. Now I have to redo the whole damn thing. Like doing stuff for tech kind of sucks. Like, and for us, it's going to be different because we might get a UI but the fun- mm-hmm. fundamentals are going to be there. But even that, I'm like, I don't want to do documentation, so we got to hire somebody. <laughs> right. Interesting. It just came to me. That's actually the second time I found you um, was when you did the Genesis thing. I was building websites, and <laughs> I I fell in love with Genesis because it was Amaze Balls, and like before yeah. before it was even Genesis, and it was just I forget his name doing the thing. Um, Brian Gardner. <laughs> yep, Brian Gardner. Um, it is really interesting that you bring that up. It is all about the principles, right? What we teach, the course will eventually look old. And for the people asking the question earlier about what my background is, it's a giant, I think it's 12, 10 by 14. It's like a shower curtain printed with that on it. Eventually we'll have to redo the content because the content itself will look old right? Just like Mm -hmm. websites from 96 look ancient, right? Mm -hmm. It's all there. It all still works. It's all the fundamentals, but um, the stuff that we teach is that way. And therefore it's easy to maintain that. Um, And interestingly enough, I actually thought about that before we started doing the course. It's like, okay, is this something that we could teach and adjust it to where people can actually go through and use it? Mm -hmm. And it just stays the same because it's principles. Um, Mark and I had several conversations about that with the sales and the marketing thing that we teach. Um, I get it from your standpoint though. You're teaching something that changes in, in many cases, some the the things that you could teach would change, but the principles and the coming back to basics is, uh, is interesting. A lot of people make shit way more complicated than it needs to be. Well, yeah. And that's where I think the whole, again, like when you look at this space and things being cyclical, right. Of, okay, people are doing vlogging now and it's like for a while web watch, we're going to have a quiet season of webinars and then webinars are going to be the new and improved webinars, you know? So it just, it's more, it's life, right. Everything is cyclical. Um, like, you know, 80s stuff is so popular. I'm like, damn, I should have hung on to some of my stuff, but you know, so it's everything is cyclical in this space. But I think what I was thinking about as you were talking about your course, Landon, is that um, what'll be really cool is when you do a refresher, you're going to have even more case studies and you'll have a different perspective having taught it to so many people at a certain place. So, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So there is that sort of, there's, you're going to want to update it, forgetting what it looks like. You're just going to be like, oh my God, this is, I've learned this, or this is what people, or even, you know what? People seem to, to, to consume this knowledge for this module in a way that we have to do this live every time or whatever. But Mm -hmm. the beauty is it's like you do it, you get the data and you move on and you keep going. Yeah. That's been a really interesting, like here's some vulnerability. That's been a really interesting thing in doing this because my way of getting clients and doing the sales thing is so not, it's not the run of the mill way to do it. And I never learned how to teach what I know. So I'm up here and when I bring it down here, it is still way the fuck up here. We've actually reiterated the course four times in like 10 months. Yeah. Because. Wow. That's a lot of work. Mm Mm-hmm. 50 to 60 videos redone four times to, to like make it make sense. It's interesting. That's where your content comes into play though, too, Mm -hmm. because you teach so much in your group. And so for anybody who is, it doesn't matter if you're course client membership, whatever level, you know, you're monetizing. I mean, there's no better practice than having to teach it and having, having to explain it. Right. And so, and it's funny because it's actually retail where I learned, I was a training manager and it's like, I got some tangible stuff on how people learn. Right. And Mm -hmm. people want to touch it. Some people want to read it. Some people want to hear it. So anytime I do stuff, I'm like audio, video written, I'm going to give it all to you, you know, but 
but it is, it's that ability to look at, is this going to work or not? And then I, this is the, the other piece with content is if you just share, this is what we're doing. This is how we planned it. Let us know. And you make it this space that's safe. They'll let you know. Right. And yep. then you course correct. <clears throat> yep. Course correct. I've, I've never heard so many people use that term. I've used that term forever. Mm -hmm. um, but those of us that are creating content to try and convey a message, mm -hmm. test adjust, test adjust, course correct. Yep. <laughs> Lenny, I cannot wait for your podcast. I think your personal brand. Well, yeah, listen. Okay. So I think it's just going to, it's going to blow up a lot of things for you. And, you know, to everybody who is watching this replay live, whatever, you know, podcasting again, I know I love consuming it, but there is, there's something intimate about it too. When someone's just listening to you. Mm -hmm. And I think your ability to talk about what you're doing as you're going, like you guys, my, and I don't know if I talked about this a lot, but the podcast, I, I had, I got coaching clients, I got sponsorships, I got website clients and you know, I didn't have a portfolio on my site for the last four years but I walk the, the walk all the time talking mm -hmm. about WordPress, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I get listed on WordPress influencers. I'm like, go oh, look at my posts. I probably haven't written a WordPress post in like a year. It's all on content and marketing and talking to other people in the space, you know? But I, I think, I don't know, I'm excited. But you know, it's funny, it's like I sit here and I'm watching and I'm like, oh my God, you could totally take that and I would take that quote and I would do it as a story, right? And I would take this and do this and it's because of your energy and how you do it. And so the beauty is that people being in your group or listening to it, people are going to share this. You watch, like, I think you're going to get the exponential um, reach of people appreciating you because your group is private, your court, you know, and so that's great. But all of a sudden it's going to be, I don't know, people are craving some, some, and not that you're new, but I mean, I think putting yourself out on a podcast I don't know. It's, it's totally your right tribe. I, I think it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. I've, um, and this is some, I've said this publicly a bunch and I, I posted in the group a couple of days ago. Um, whose podcast would you like to hear me interviewed on? Right. And like outside of our little incestuous pool of group owners, right we've done a bunch of interviews all together. Like who would interview me in a way? And it was way shorter than this, but like, here's the context. Who would you want to hear me interviewed by? And a bunch of people were like, Oh my God, it would be amazeballs if you were on Joe Rogan. Like truly that's my dream. Mm -hmm. And I will be on Joe Rogan before I'm dead. But my style of is like his, he's, you know, MMA and, and like aliens and stuff. And I jive with a lot of that, but the style of that show, like Friday night live was born out of that. We were four five, six hour Friday night lives for like six months straight. You know, like I can that's see my you in a studio with people. Yeah, totally. Like, totally. You know, like I could see you at the desk with a couple mics and stuff. And it's one of those things. Cause I made an announcement that I'm going to have Gary V on my show this year. Yeah. And I would love to whatever. And, and you know, what's funny is I'll get in like a funky space, but I, and I'll just plug him in. And does he say the same thing a lot, but I've seen him transition and he shifts and he's like, look, don't be me, be you, but just stop complaining. Right. All those things that resonate with you. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's fun to have those goals and it's, I'm not a guru worshiper. You guys, I just know what makes me feel good. Like remember Dr. Wayne Dyer, got me through the worst 10 years of my life. God bless the man. I saw him speak in San Francisco three or four times. I don't care if you make me feel good. You're my, that, that's, that's how I gauge who I listen to, who I read, who I pay attention to online, who I have conversations with. It's, it's that fundamental, like, I don't know, kids, they don't hang around assholes. Right. You know, they know when they're little. <laughs> right. We'll talk about the, the puberty years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Tara, to answer your question, why not extract the audio from the FNLs and use that for your podcast? I think, um, and this is kind of what I was trying to verbalize earlier when I was talking about the podcast thing. I think ultimately it comes down to there's probably two shows. There's probably the marketing show where it's like once a week, there's a podcast that's published that's 20 to 30 minutes long. And it's like this format. And then I think there is another podcast show and maybe even a separate podcast where a lot of the stuff that we do Friday night live or, or, you know, whatever is 
stripped audio and published as that because there are there are people in our world tiffany's a great example she's like can you get me the info in 10 fucking minutes (laughs) in some cases that it's like yeah totally right but she'll sit here and watch friday night live but there are some people you publish these on youtube not yet Okay. You know, it's funny. So because like my YouTube channel, I don't know, I've got like almost 1600 subscribers, like 300, they're all WordPress how to's, right? Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I had the foresight. It's just Kim Doyle's a channel. So it's all changing. I may lose a bunch of people, whatever. But the point I had a friend and again, it's, it's fun to step outside of your comfort zone. Um, and you should talk to Ross Brand. He's a good friend of mine now. And he is, he's got a couple of B live shows. He wasn't right, but he's one of these like prolific, he's such a promoter of other people and sharing people he likes. But it's like, you know, we were talking, he's like, why aren't you putting your stuff on YouTube? Like you have access to stuff because of the subscriber count and all their changes. I was like, I don't know, you know, and again, you get the the value of search, Mm -hmm. right? Mind you, do I want to hire someone to do all the metadata shit? I do. I don't want to do the keywords either. I don't want to do the tagging, Mm -hmm. but like Landon, I mean, this you know, look at, look at your kids. Do they watch TV? They watch YouTube. Right. Mm -hmm. And so things are shifting like this should apps. I would do Friday night live on YouTube strictly. And for people who want to strip out the audio, I mean, publish or just publish it as an, as a a video podcast. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll it'll show up on Apple TV. You're going to have Alexa briefings, right? You know, Alexa, you Alexa play Friday night live for me. I would totally listen to this in the background. So would you, you would say do that on YouTube versus in Facebook? Well, I, you can record it here. I'm, I, you might want to test. I don't know what you have, but what I would do is I would start taking all the recordings, right? So if you've got the native recording from Zoom, the quality is good. I'd get it up and I'd start publishing mm-hmm. and getting some feedback. And then I would ask your tribe, you guys go subscribe to the channel. We're going to do some testing. And I would be like, do some raw all right, guys, here we go. We haven't pushed on this channel. And I would do that live and start having those conversations, but I would do it and see what happens. And then I would say, I would test it. I'd be like, all right, guys, we're going live on YouTube. Let's, let's, I, let's, I want you all there. Make it a fucking party, right? Like go all out, have a party and have some engagements, you know, whether, I don't know what the, the whole chat thing is like on there yet, but I mean, I would go all in, but I would, you have so many Friday night lives. Right now, I would start publishing those, publishing those, publishing those. And I don't know what you guys do in terms of like, do you have a WordPress site or your whatever, but I would make, I would then take the YouTube and embed it. I would, because the thing is, you know, Facebook, it's, it's a different space. You're not going to get the search piece. You're not going to get, because here's the other thing. You put this on YouTube, I'm putting this on my site. Yep. Right. So then people are going to search if they come to my site and they're like, Oh my God, you were on a live stream for two hours on a Friday night with Landon Porter. Like, great. And I'll write a post about it and I'll tag, I'll tag you in it and then I'll share it socially. It's content that I can take. So, you know, I think all your Friday night lives, I would, I would totally do a gorilla channel and I would go all in and just start publishing that and then test going live on YouTube. Yep. I mean, you know, when you're not sleeping, <laughs> like, cause you start hearing this, right. And it's like, Oh my God, I just got 12 more tasks. No, actually. Um, it's, it's been on our plate to do YouTube for a while. And we, we've actually used YouTube as a holding pen for a, almost all of our videos because they needed to be on YouTube so we could put them on click funnels. But then we went to Kajabi so I can upload them direct to Kajabi so we've got a YouTube channel. We haven't, we haven't leveraged it yet. My, where I came to the conclusion about this is the videos in the Facebook group are not evergreen. Like even on desktop to go search the videos is a fucking nightmare. But on YouTube, a video that I did two years ago is totally evergreen. It's right. really easy to find and it comes up like somebody's watching a video and you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm just going to hit a couple of these because, because Tara was saying, hope you don't mind that, you know, she'd start on, on Facebook and then go to YouTube. And I get, that's why I was like, I don't know. I've not done it either. So you just have to play with it and test it. But the thing is too, on YouTube, underneath every channel, and you look at Russell Brunson, does it Gary B, you're going to link to join the Facebook group. You're going to, you, you drop all your links in there. Right. Mm-hmm. And so there is this, it's a different thing. Like, trust me, like I'm probably going to have to, I'm going to have to work at a new audience. They're used to 
how to do this with, with WordPress or whatever. And I, I haven't, I've, I've started putting up some live streams on there um, and I'm totally getting views, you know, and it's, it's a lot of, it's been like Troy Dean in the WordPress space or something, but it's just, you know, I think that the, the value of all of this, and then as you guys grow, Oh my God, Landon, like I would cut shit up and I'd make a trailer for your channel with these Friday night lives. Mm -hmm. I would totally make a trailer, you know, and pull it in. And again, and you highlight people, Hey, just want you to know, you guys are on YouTube, however, you know, your mm -hmm. language, whatever, not, not Kim's hyper Pollyanna, but <laughs> this is awesome sauce. You know, cause anytime you can deliver, you were awesome. Thank you for being on my show. Here's a piece of content you can use. I mean, if someone were going to, were to give me something that I had participated in and I don't have to go recreate the freaking wheel and I can just publish it on my platform. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like, and this is really like, what a gift to me. Yes, you invited me on here, but I'm like, oh my God, I totally got to sit and hang out. Amazing group of people. Like you're using your platform to help me share my message. Mm -hmm. There is not a better gift, whether it's audio or video. I gotta, I gotta say something right there. Now, I know that most of the people that watch Friday Night Live and hang out with me when we do these longer shows get it. And I know that most of the people that will get this far in a Friday Night Replay get it. But you just fucking nailed it, right? We've built a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I bring you on my stage. I want my people to know about you and what you do. There's a difference between that and stepping into my sandbox to get that on your own. And this is a fundamental thing. And I think it's because I'm 40 and I'm not 20. Mm -hmm. I think that, and I'm going to rant for a minute, but fucking a, this rant. is like the thing, right? You invited me to do your summit thing because we've built a relationship. You like what I do and, and the mm -hmm. thing that we're doing content creator wise, it makes sense for you to put me on your stage. You're a content person and you're fucking doing it the way that I think it should be done. So I bring you on my stage. Mm -hmm. right? There's a key element in their relationship. <laughs> Fuck. It's, it's, as we've grown this group, like 7,000 members over the last two and a half, three months, it's wow. like trying to get that message across is brain damage sometimes. Like that's what the treasure hunt was born out of was like, well, I, I have to tell you, here's a funny thing. You know what I'm saying? Like you were, like Gary Vee says, he guilts people into buying his book thing because he gives so much. Okay, here's a great example of you and Ash, right? Mm -hmm. So I've connected with her on Facebook. I follow her on Instagram. I can't, one, I'm a, I like juicing too, right? So I see all of her salad in a blender. And I'm like, now, now I'm like, I just, I want to give more, right? Because of what you guys give. So I'm like, oh, well, of course I'm going to like her stuff. You know what I mean? And there are times when like, I don't know about anybody else, but you're almost like, you know, just on your phone in bed. And it's like, I don't want to extend the energy to push or like comment, but I'm like, well, I got to like it at least. Right. I'm like, it's Ash. And I'm like, I don't know you guys that great, but it's like, I see what you're doing. I like how you're doing it. And I want to take that relationship further. And it's like, it's that simple appreciation piece. Right. And it's like, well, of course I got to like what they're doing. Or like, I wanted to link to you guys in my group because I like what you're doing. And it's like, you know, there, there is this relationship piece and, it's the beauty of doing it of where I said it's, it's the ultimate gift, right? No strings. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to sell anybody tonight. It's just, there's, it's just, you know? Yep. Well, and it's the, um, the people in my world ultimately that matter. And like, this is, this is the truth of it. And this is going to butt hurt some people, the people in my world that ultimately matter that are actually leveraging the knowledge that we give them are the ones that will go buy your shit. <laughs> right. And because you were brought on the stage and, and vice versa, when you put me on mine or put me on yours, it's a, somebody brought up in, in my group today, um, asking about referrals. Actually it was, it was somebody that did a video. This is the ultimate new way to give a referral mm -hmm. this, right? Right. Yep. And it's a win, win, win. So for people who are thinking about content, right, or doing it, and maybe that's why I love podcasting so much because it blew up the relationships in my space, right? People knew my brand. I had a catchy name, which I didn't know shit about WordPress. I just knew it was a good domain name when I grabbed it. But it's like, you know, so it was the relationships. And because like, this is just me, like, 
out and about whatever, right? And mm -hmm. and so there isn't a, a different side to me. So it's like I started doing that. And then what I would do is anytime I have a good guest on, I'm like, do you want to be on some more shows? Do you want me to connect you with some other people? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I drop the ball, but I try to do that whenever I can. And so it's, I think that's why I do love podcasting. So if people are thinking about content or, you know, it's kind of like you look at the summit model because the summit model is also a way to build relationships, build a list and you can monetize it. Right. But like the gal that I interviewed last, I'd never talked to her. She was a referral for my friend Ross. And I was like, Oh my God, you're down in Southern California. We got to hang. Like you were so fun. Right. And you feel like this little kid who just won a prize. Cause now you got a new friend. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's a great way to, to show up. And like I said, I've never said no to supporting people or I'm like, do you know how many times or people say, Oh, we've got a new tool. I use my platform all the time. Cause I know I'm not going to be doing much with the WordPress check page, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so it's like, well, let me leverage my audience. I'll help you. And it, you guys, I did not have an ask. Now I will have software to do the ask, right? But there was never an agenda. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing with this yet, but I'm having fun. Mm -hmm. Question, do you have guests onto your podcast? Oh, well, you're already going to be on my show. I already well, know that. But I'm not asking for me. Here's, here's an interesting thing. Um, have, have you heard of Satori Prime, the two brothers, Guy and Alon? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, you know what? My uh, a friend of mine, uh, Jason Hornung, has a Facebook ad agency. So I've heard of them through him because I think Jason ran his ads okay. or their ads. So they are, real short, quick plug, they are um, business, entrepreneurship, woo-woo, the gambit. And Courtney Blair, who gets me on podcasts, right? She, she acts as, as our agent to get me on podcasts, connected me with them. And Elon set up a call to talk with me beforehand because the sales gorilla and he's like, fuck, not another sales guy, right? <laughs> totally. Because, and this is the reason that I was asking this is early on when I just had Friday Night Live and it was kind of open, sometimes you get somebody on or sometimes you do an interview with somebody that even though you've had a brief conversation with, you're like, motherfucker, I so shouldn't have had that one. I started doing pre-calls for that reason. Yeah. Right. So the reason that I bring that up is because if somebody asked me to go onto their show, like that's a given because I know how I'm going to be for their audience, mm -hmm. but having people as guests on my show, I'm going, um, well, you know yeah, I, mean? I do. And it, you know, it's funny, like, recovering Catholic, I'm going to pre-qualify everything. So nobody thinks I'm dissing anybody. But, you know, like I interviewed the founder of active campaign, you know, never published it. I was like, this is the shittiest interview. Or there's a kid out there who's like 18 blowing it up with Instagram. Sweet kid, but it was an awful interview. My shows are an hour. I could barely squeeze out 30 minutes from this kid. Right. And it was, wow. and it was not that he wasn't answering the questions, but he, there's a little bit of life experience that comes from this taking it a step further and digging a little bit deeper. And it's like, I try to get tangibles just like you did. Like if someone's new to content, what could they do today? Right. You find out what people are asking questions about. You start answering them simple, you know, so there is that pre-qualifying. And the other thing that I made the mistake of doing with the podcast was um, I have a friend that works with authors on helping them launch books. And so it'd be, so we connected, he's a super nice guy, a lot of integrity, but I hit a point where I'm like, you know what, Tom? I said, if these authors are not going to at least share socially these interviews, this is a waste of my time. I don't need them on my show. Yep. You know, I'm not saying they have to email, but great. So I'm interviewing them because they're launching a book and there's nothing in it for me. Like I'm getting the pleasure of having them on my show. There, there, it started feeling icky. Right. And then, but then there's other ones like John Nastor, who's got hack the entrepreneur. He had me back on his show. We hit it off. He was a good guy, but I just got to this point where I was like, uh, if you're going to be a dick, I'm just not going to keep doing it. And so I told him, and it's funny, he's not sent anybody my way. I'm like, I'm not asking for them to email. I'm just saying you could at least socially share the podcast with your audience. That would be the decent human thing to do. And if you're not going to do it, eh, I have too many other people I can talk to. Yep. Um, you know? Question, if you don't mind sharing, what do you go through on your pre-calls for people that are going to be on your show? for myself and anybody else that's doing a podcast or thinking about it, what are you asking people? Honestly, I just say, well, let's hop on a call. Let's have a conversation because if the dialogue doesn't flow, you know, and I just say, well, let's hop on and see if it's a good fit. I keep it very, and I'm like, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. And because you know, like I, 
I do, I have a couple little kind of segments where I'm like, all right, guys, you know the drill. If you haven't left a review, blah, blah, blah. You know, I have a couple little things I say, but for the most part, you know, it's like, I don't do specific segments. I want them to introduce themselves. So if they can't tell a story or it flows, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I'll get back to you. And I have a thing on the site that says be on the show. And I have people emailing me often about, um, you know, oh, would they be, they'd be a great guest for your show. And some people I'm like, yeah, great. Let's talk. And then I've dropped the ball or whatever. But a lot of times, you know, you know, it's funny because this might sound contrary to what I was saying before, where I'm like, I don't ever say no or whatever. Um, at the same time, if you're asking me to be on my show, then I do expect you to do something. If yep. I ask you, there's no expectations. That's me saying, I like what you're doing. I want to share you with my audience. What you do with it is up to you. Right. But, but so it's like when people do that and I'm like, have you read any of my content? Have you commented? Have you like come into my world at all? Mm -hmm. You know? And so there is this like, and I get it. There's got to be an element because cold outreach also works and there's a value in that. Right. But there, there has to be a, look, we've looked at your site. We look at your audience. We've, we've listened to the show. I've got a great guest for you. You know, in return, we would be so happy to share it with our audience and to email people, whatever it is, there has, there, there is a, it's life. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, and I'm, I'm happy to do all the free content I want, but if you want to be on my show, then I do expect it. So I literally just have a casual conversation like I would with somebody. That's it. Period. And if it's weird and it was because of those weird interviews where I was like, Oh my God, I'm not even going to make it an hour. This, what am I going to do with this interview? Yeah. I knew we connected at a deeper level. Right. <laughs> I just want to have a conversation. Like, tell me right. about yourself. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's exactly how I would do it. Too. That's it. But you also want, you want somebody and hopefully people feel that way tonight is that, that one, that when you're going to be asking them questions, they're thinking about your audience, mm -hmm. you know, and there are times where I also feel like I'm cheating because I've interviewed some people. Um, there's a guy named Brian Kurtz who is brilliant. If you want an, an intro ever, he's republishing Eugene Schwartz work the breakthrough advertising. Yes. Brian wow. Kurtz is like this. Um, and for everybody listening, Eugene Schwartz was like this copywriting advertising legend. Right. And Brian Kurtz, like, I so felt like, Oh my God, I told him getting like a one-on-one -on -one mastermind and hit the way his mind. And he's got life experience. He's a little bit older, but it, I mean, not, I mean, he's in his fifties. <laughs> I'm not close. So I shouldn't say that, but I'm like, he, you know, he, it was just like, oh my God, like sometimes I feel like I'm getting personal coaching from somebody and I'm so soaking it in. Like I was, he is, when I'm get ready to hire a mentor, I will pay for him. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, so you get, you get, you just, there's so much to get out of it and having those connections and relationships. Um, but I don't know, you, I knew that Brian was going to be able to deliver so much to my listeners that he was going to think about how he answered the questions in a way that people could take what he was saying and implement it, or it would resonate versus, well, this is what I'm doing now. And this is how people work with me, you know, and it's deeper than that, but there has to be somebody who knows how to deliver the other side of the interview so that you feel you're kind of a part of that conversation. Yep. Yeah. It's funny. I actually, I have that book. I can see it from here. Oh, um, Ash said she, Brian Kurtz is awesome. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'll have him on a content summit at some point too, but I just, he was, the, he was so gracious. And here's the funny thing, guys, you know how many people have contacted me and they've written a book and they don't send me the book. I'm all, <laughs> so I, like one guy literally said, he's like, oh, you didn't buy my book on the interview. And I, I was almost ready to say, you didn't send it to me. Did I miss it in the mail? Brian Kurtz sent it to me signed. John Jansen, Phil Singleton sent it to me signed. And from somebody who was in the book industry for a long time, I was like, you know, but I'm like, you just, Gary V. it's never wrong to do the right thing. Doing the right thing is always the right thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's that, <laughs> I'm going to, sorry, the line from uh, um, Goodfellas, business is bad. Fuck you. Pay me. Like there comes a point. It's like, come on. I know you're busy, but a little more yep. outreach. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> guys, we're going to wrap this up here in a minute because I'm going to, I'm going to have a private conversation with Kim about a couple of things. I'm like, and I got to get my hair off my neck. <laughs> if you have any last questions for, please ask if you've got a question for after, after we're no longer live, or if you're on the replay tagger, she's in the group. 
Yep. Um, this is this is one of my favorite interviews that I've done in the group bar none period. This has Aww. been the most the most fun for me. I I interviewed um, Nick um, Nick Tilia a month ago, three weeks ago, and it was fucking awesome sauce. Ben and I've had some rad interviews. This has been for me. This has been rad. So thank you for doing this tonight. Thank you for having me, Landon. And what a fun group and so many nice comments. Um, it's fun. And Devinder from my group came over too. And nice. by the way, I'm not selling anybody, but he is a genius that has done lead survey site and he is redoing my personal brand for me. So if anybody needs a site, I will hook you up with my friend. Awesome. Um, what, uh, what, what group, if people want to come hang out with you in your world, is there a Facebook group? Is there YouTube? Like, where do you want people to go to hang out with you? Uh, the group is great. Content creators. And it's, I think it's content creators group. Um, and you can find me socially anywhere. Kim Doyle for the most part. And it's D O Y A L. Um, I think I've got an opt-in on my site, but WordPress chick, it's all one and the same, right? So mm -hmm. you can find me anywhere. Um, and you guys, I mean it, like I'm happy to, if you've got content questions, ask me, I'll Skype, whatever. Like I just, you know, Yep. Just bear with me. If I've been talking too long, I might sound a little punchy. <laughs> there is a content creator summit coming up that I am part of, and we will be letting you guys here in this group know about that when it goes live. Um, I don't see any last questions. You guys are most fucking welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight for Friday night live. That was so much fun. Thank you. Oh yeah. You guys have a fantastic evening. Peace out. Cup Scouts. Bye, That was fucking rad, dude. That was so fun. That was so fun. I was just making sure my kid was still here. She hadn't left yet. <laughs> um, yeah, that was great. What a fun group. I won't keep you. Thanks for joining me for two hours and 15 minutes tonight. Oh my God, that went fast. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, and seriously, like I've got some questions for you. I'd like to have a conversation with you about stuff. Um, we don't need to do it right now but I totally feel like we've started a relationship and I really like, I don't want to just like be in your hair and pick your brain, but you've got, you've got knowledge about a couple of things that I'd love to have access to. Um, I would be delighted Landon. No, like cool. this is a friendship and I'm so good with that. And I mean, like, I think that your personal brand, you can run with this. Hello. Ash. <laughs> Hi there. See how you here. guilted Hi. me into liking all your salads in a blender. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of have a problem with vegetables. That's a good problem to have. I juice, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I drink them way better than I eat them. So, yep. <laughs> me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anything you need, Landon. I'm so game. Just holler. Cool. We'll do that. Um, do you have a scheduling link or something like that? Yep. Hold on. I'll grab it for you. <clears throat> and if you would like a copy of this recording, I will send that to you. I can upload it to. Google Drive or YouTube or whatever and send it to you if you want to use some of this content. I would, yeah, I would totally love to. Cool. Um, and then what we'll do too is um, I'm trying to wrap up what I have left in the queue for WordPress chick. So I'd love to have you on the Kim Doyle show. We'll definitely get you on Don't Give a Fox. For some reason, it's not showing up in the US store yet. I don't know why. Um, but, and then if you want more interviews, like I, I know a lot of people that do podcasts and stuff too. Um, but I want to connect you for sure with um, Ross Brand. He's just a super nice guy. He is so good. Where should I send? The, oh, I'll just put it in Messenger. Okay. Yep, that'll work. Um, and he's really connected in the live stream community. Excuse me. Because, um, yeah, I just think your personal brand, you know, you could take these and put them into a book too, right? Yeah. Conversation. I mean, you could so put all this into a book. Um, but... Yeah, I, I think the podcast will blow stuff up for you. And he's gonna, I'm going to have him show me how to do the Alexa briefings. Cool. Um, I, will come up with a, I will come up with a list of questions. And um, I will, in essentially any way to give back for that, I would like to, and it's essentially about the podcast stuff and mm -hmm. how I can take what I'm doing and leverage it you do a lot of content in a lot of different places. I don't, it's all on Facebook. Yeah. Um, so that's essentially the conversation that I'd like to have with you. Cause I need some guidance. 
Okay, we'll do it. You know what I'll do? Send me some questions first. Okay. We'll record it. I'm going to create like a case study content, suggestions, whatever. Okay. Um, and then what would be really fun is to track that journey too. Like, I'm so, down. right? Get like a baseline, like where you're at on each platform. Because again, it's, I think it's this navigating where to have what type of conversation and where to have what type of engagement, mm -hmm. you know? And, and like, I, I love automation, but I really feel like a lot of these things, it's like, eh, they want you there. They want you having conversations. So where to dial in automation and where to, I mean, like 50 ways sideways, I can see with these Friday Night Lives, how I'd repurpose them. <laughs> That's rad. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, you could do infographics too. Right. Like the journey of a gorilla treasure hunt. I mean, that would run. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, like, there's so many little things you could do. Anyways, I'm going to get hyper and be here all night. <laughs> I'm not going to sleep tonight because now I'm going to be thinking about all this. <laughs> yeah. I just, I think your personal brand, it, you've got a ton of opportunity, a ton of opportunity with the personal brand. And um, you, you know, it's just, it, it's crazy. Like quick little story. See the story thing works so well, but, um, I had, um, uh, the anniversary of my husband's passing is May 7th. So last year, you know, it's like, and you think everyone knows your story and they've heard it all right. Or it's on my about page. So you think, and it was 15 years ago this year. So I woke up on the seventh, it was a Sunday and it wasn't the first thing on my mind. So a couple hours later, I'm like, damn, that's kind of awesome right? Like it felt good to not feel heavy, right? And to get to the other side of this. And so I was like, I'm going to just share that I feel really good about this. And so I emailed my list and it was in loving memory and a personal message of hope because my point was your dreams are worth pursuing. You got to trust this. I never thought I'd be on the other side. I never in a million years thought, holy shit, like we're doing a live video call. Like you just, you don't connect. So I just said to you guys, thank you for being on this journey with me. Like, I know I've changed my shtick with the WordPress chick a handful of times. I, I blew my mind. I got 30 responses on a Sunday. I then posted it as a post. And I think I had like 1,800 visits that day. And I had so much. And it wasn't because there's always been this like, oh, I don't want to use the I'm a widow, blah, blah, blah. You know, do I want to be single? No. And I've dated and been engaged in between. But it's like, that's a whole other comical story. But it was this connection piece with people, right? Like, and you just get into this space of, oh my God, I thought everybody knew this. I totally thought everybody knew this. And so, and I told it from a story where people are like, I don't know, I'm not a victim. My life is good. My kids are good. I had something wonderful once I can find it again. Like, you know, it was just this, like, you guys go for it. Life is too short kind of thing. And I think that you have enough stories in, I mean, like even the story about we're moving to the mountains right? Mm -hmm. That is an episode. That's a podcast to me. Like, and I would do it. Right. And I, I jokingly say I'm the noise Nazi. I literally live in headphones because I'm so sick of gardening tools. I don't want to hear, them, mm -hmm. you know, or other, like my, my dogs can bark, but I don't want to hear your dogs. Bark. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Yep. <laughs> right. And I'm just like, Oh my God. So all these stupid stories that give you an insight into my like self-deprecating sense of humor, but it's like, I don't know. I, I just think you telling stories about what you guys are doing and, and how it's working in your lives at like, I mean, a whole post on the wood sign sales mm -hmm. gorilla. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a picture. And like, like there's so many that, you know, clearly I run. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's like, this is, this is where I'm at is I am able to just fucking mass create content. Mm -hmm. and like it's net, it's natural to me. It's native to me, like the sign and moving to like, mm -hmm. I can totally do that. How I fucking distribute that and like how to navigate doing that. My first question is, is cool. You did a thing, but how'd you fucking turn around and create a post out of that? Con like, I don't know how to do that. You know yeah. what I, mean? I totally, I will help you with whatever you name. Absolutely. Fucking and rad. I yeah, it's just, I think that it, you'll be surprised with the podcasting too, because you love the video, but I don't know, you know, you already have these conversations and the fact that people can now take you wherever they want to go mm -hmm. is gold. Yep. But put these on YouTube. <laughs> Done. I'm like, Friday Night Live, I'm like, that's fun, right? Yeah. I, I mean, totally. And then you can mix them and do a trailer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially with gorilla with clips, like you guys have a totally good thing. Like I actually bought, okay, stay here. I'm going to show you. Okay. And it's in my ears, but this is what a nut I am. So I showed you Lexi. Can you hear me? I love her. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So after 
Target Halloween sale. Look what I bought. Don't like, trip. <laughs> That's fucking awesome sauce. So I'm totally going to live stream and this crazy thing. And I waited until it was like 15 bucks, right? But I'm like, oh my God, I have to buy this Lexi mask. It's our fox. That's right? crazy. It's, it's exactly your fox. I was thinking today before we did this, I'm all, do I know anybody with a gorilla mask? Because that would be so fun. Like you turn on the camera and I'm all. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Awesome sauce. Yeah, I'm pumped for you, Landon. Any, anything I can do to support you guys, and and I really, I think the podcast will surprise you. Yeah. Like, do you know Arlene Battisil? No. I have to get her in this group. Okay. Last story, and I'll let you go. She is a kick in the friggin' pants. Okay, so she's been on Shark Tank. She's like 58. She's a ClickFunnels certified partner, and she 2008 was in real estate crash. Blah blah. She. Created a company called Go Go Gear. It's Kevlar leggings for women who uh, for motorcycle and scooters. Wow. Yeah, and like she's the only person because I don't swear on the show, but I had to do a warning. There's adult language. <laughs> like Arlene is fucking hysterical, and but I told her same thing. I'm like Arlene, you need a you need a your personal brand. You need a podcast. Done. She's launching it like in two weeks. Yeah. I'm like I really believe in the medium, and I think you'll be able to get especially since you guys do coaching you'll have people reaching out. And here's the other thing, like if you're, I don't know your courses are, but what do you think is going to sponsor all of Kim Doyle's show? Lead surveys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yep. 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 So there is that like, well, I can do that over there, but I mean, I, I think the personal brand thing is going to hit you in a bigger way than uh, it'll, you, you'll be able to run with it with the podcast. So should I brand it Landon Porter or should I brand it Gorilla? As somebody who branded herself under something else for 10 years yep. and it's changing, I would go with the personal brand and you can pull, I would pull in the gorilla. I would pull in the branding. Like I added my name to my logo like six years ago. Um, but the thing is you could do gorilla, gorilla radio with Landon Porter. If you want to mm -hmm. just make sure your name is in there, you know, like, do you know who James Altucher is? Mm -hmm. to, quirky dude. Right. But I'm like, yep. I love you. I'm like, I'm just going to do the Kim Doyle show. Oh, that, yep. was, that was it. Sorry, I swear. It's not I've loud. I've not had coffee in the last, since this morning. Um, but yeah, like I would, I would totally make sure that your name is, is dominant in it. I mean, you think about Joe Rogan, like is his name, like is his show called something else? No. Yep. Gary Vaynerchuk? Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, Russell Brunson does marketing secrets because he is representing the company, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and you even look at all the content that he's done and he's got Dave Woodward doing that show now. And because he's only one person, mm -hmm. but he's click funnels. I would, you know, you think about where you're going with the brand and if you want to be on Joe Rogan and you want to, you know, drive that, um, I would totally make sure your name is first. Mm -hmm. There's so much more flexibility. Yeah. Then. Yep. 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 Interesting. You know, and the thing is people, right? Like we were saying before, people are in their gr in your group and follow your group because of you guys. They follow you, yep. right? Like why do they sit on here for two hours? You. That's what I finally was like, they're going to come with me, whether it's Kim Doyle or the WordPress chick. It is what it is, right? Yep. <laughs> I've been talking about WordPress in so long. So yeah, I'm totally excited for you. Like there's a lot of little things you can do. And you know, the other thing I would do just to start documenting, like what I started doing even is, so when I was working on the funnel pages for, for lead surveys, um, let me just text my daughter and say she can't leave yet. Okay. Don't go. Um, but I'll take, I'll do, I'll take my camera and I'll film and I'll zoom in on funny angles of the pages I'm working on. So those are great for stories. Anything you guys are doing, you know, I mean, you guys have a fire pit, right? Like all of those things, like anything that you're doing and, you know, I would run with to the whole cigar thing. That would be super fun. I think you can play off of that. I've been having that thought lately, the whole cigar and, and pipe tobacco thing, like mm -hmm. even as a totally separate other business, because I am finding that I have a personality that people like really latch onto. Well, and you can play, you can have spoofs with it too. Right. So you could pretend like do it like with the sweater and like, you could really do spoofy shit with it. Right. As well as like, 
just being Landon, doing whatever, you know, and talk about it. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like all those little snippets that people like to see into you. Mm-hmm. Where do you buy your tobacco? And, and are you worried about smoking or what, anything? Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. But I would have some fun with it, you yeah. know? The whole I mean, you could run with it. Mr. Rogers, me walking through the front door, taking off one hoodie and putting on another hoodie, taking off a pair of boots, putting on another pair of yeah. boots. Instead of the Mr. Rogers music, yeah. it's welcome to the jungle. Me take a phone call. It's a sales call. It's super easy. Oh, yeah. Here's what yeah. it is. Here's how you can get it. Yeah. Here, go there. Cool. Mm-hmm. Take care. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like I'm sitting here looking at your office. Like you could do a video of the of the board, of the mic, of the gorilla, of the computer, and there's five clips for a story that you, and then you just put, because now Instagram's letting you do stuff over it, right? I don't know, it's it's that stuff, I can't say that I'm brilliant at, but it's it's really like, well, fuck, I'm just gonna have some fun with this and play with it and try to come up with something creative. And I'm like, all right, Kim, you gotta start, and it's to Gary's point where he's like, people are doing more interesting things in life so they can show. I'm like, all I'm doing is taking my dogs to the park. That is my life right now. And then I tried to like, oh, I'm going to get creative and do a video of making my coffee in the morning. I'm all, okay, you are not an artist, so stop doing that. <laughs> it was like clanging in the cup and I'm all, just take a picture. This is so stupid. Right. But then I shared that on a live stream. People are like, oh my God, that's totally funny. So, you know, I take pictures when I'm reading, if I remember, mm-hmm. you know. So, I don't know. It's... I, don't, I think you can run with this, Landon. I mean, just look in your office. There's like a zillion things you could do. Yep. Game on. Fucking A, Batman. <laughs> don't spit it out. <laughs> and at least it's just water, right? Yep. Trust me, my crazy hyper hands, I've knocked coffee over a keyboard and ruined that. I'm like, simmer down now. <laughs> uh-huh. Rad. All right. Thank you so much, Kim. You are so welcome. This has been a ton of fun. You schedule something and I will do whatever I can and I'm going to just document it and we'll run with it. Awesome. I'll send you this later on tonight when it's done rendering. Okay. Awesome. Ash, great to see you. Keep Make your salads. You inspire me. I should have a juice. Don't get a bit of cheeseburger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cheeseburger does sound good, doesn't it? I know, right? I'm like, five guys. What time is it? Okay. Bye guys. Have a good night. Peace Bye. out, Cub Scout. <laughs>